everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 83. Should be episode like 85. <laughs> um, yeah. So before we get into anything, uh, I do need to apologize. And I'm not going to apologize to our YouTube viewers because um, all of you folks out there, this content's all free for you. Um so you just get it when you get it and be happy with it. <laughs> but I do need to apologize deeply to our patrons, mm-hmm. especially all the ones that are of the $5 and up variety. Um, because you guys, the $1 help as well, but the, the ones that pay $5 and up specifically are paying for podcast perks. Getting the podcast early, um, getting things like getting access to us live streaming while we record the podcast, uh, and then obviously a chance to be on the podcast. And all of this goes to also support one of the stretch goals, the very first stretch goal we ever hit. And that was the fact that we would do a podcast every week. Mm-hmm. And we've been, I would say, for the most part, pretty good about hitting every week. Yeah. Um, but there has been a hitch here and there where we've had to miss a week. Um, I was sick. Eric was out of town. It just didn't come together. I guess it lined up. They didn't, didn't show up. Uh <laughs> This time around, it's a little interesting. I already knew a couple weeks back that one wasn't going to happen for various reasons. Um, that it's not really up to me to get into. It's just, it just didn't happen. Uh, last week, I can take some blame and not some blame, and I don't. It's all I'll, my fault. I canceled uh, it technically. I'll take most of the blame. I fell asleep. Yeah, and, and I noted that in the on the Discord to our patrons too. Oh, Eric fell asleep. You know, I don't know if we're going to do the podcast this week. And it wasn't like we couldn't we could have attempted to squeeze it in the following day, but the timing for me it wasn't going to work out because those who don't know the reason we do our recordings on podcast so late on a Thursday night is one Thursday night just happens to be one of the nights we're both free, uh, and two it also happens to be after my kids are in bed. It's mm-hmm. really hard for me to do it during the day. My fiance often works till 10 p.m. at night, uh, Central Standard Time, so it's. It's a little rough trying to find a time period to fit it in. So like when he's like, oh, I can come right after work and do it. That sounds great until the fact that I still have my kids and put another bed. Mm-hmm. It's just not, our kids aren't part of this podcast. So yeah. uh, that's just the way it is. Um, so, yeah, I just want to really, really apologize. I need to make it up to you guys in some way. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that means. We'll throw a bonus episode in next month's. You know, maybe hit five podcasts next month instead of four. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Maybe there'll be a special holiday special for Halloween next week. I, who knows? I, I don't know because I haven't made any plans for it yet. What I can tell you, though, is one thing I do want to hit on uh, at least uh, soon. I don't want to promise a, an episode. I want to start getting extra guests. And I've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I failed to deliver on, on this promise a few times just because I just get too busy. Uh, but one thing I'm going to start doing is at the end of recording um, a podcast, pretty much before I go to bed or anything else, unless it happens to be a podcast that's running super, super late until like 1 a.m., which has has happened. We've done that before. Uh, I'm basically going to be trying to line up guests immediately. So I'm going to send out contacts to people I think would be good for the next episode, like that same night that we're recording this one for the next one. That way... It's on, the onus is on the people I contacted to contact me back about interest. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't happen, then it'll just be us two. But uh, yeah, I would like to, I would like to get more on. It actually gets more complicated the more people we have on. Uh, <laughs> we have the right mixer and all the right equipment to make it work, but it's still like one of those. It gets finicky every time. I don't know why. Uh, some of it's because we obviously don't know what equipment they're using. Um, some of it's just the fact that we're all speaking over the internet and that creates its own latency and its own issues mm-hmm. sometimes feedback loops that are just crazy to deal with but you know sometimes the issue is just entirely on my end which is what it usually is uh since the last time we had a guest on i have a new mixer now yeah because found out the mixer is broken and it's been broken but we didn't know how broken it was because it was just us we hadn't yeah. had a guest on in a while yeah suddenly we have a patron on and it's like oh this is really really bad and it's not his end it's ours yeah yeah <laughs> that sucks uh so that good that's not that's no longer a, a, an issue as far as i'm aware technically i have not yet plugged headphones into this new board so could plug them in and find out that port's <laughs> broken again so it's possible but we won't know until we have a guest again. <laughs> oh, boy. I thought about testing it now, but I was like, eh. Yeah. I don't need it now. Yeah. So, whatever. You guys are here for the Nintendo Prime Podcast. First one in a while. We've got some killer topics for you guys, uh, including a surprise topic at the end that just popped up as I was finalizing everything for this episode. But the first thing we have to talk about 
is the game that we were probably close to being most hyped from coming out of E3. There's a few of them from E3. Yeah, yeah. Like, like besides this game that we're about to talk about, what other games were you hyped for coming out of E3 that we, you actually went hands-on with? Ninjala. 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 Like, that's like the yeah, only that, other one that, yeah. to me, competed yeah. on the list. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Was Ninjala. Uh, Pokemon, for the little bit that we got to play, well, was... The problem is, I didn't get to play long enough to really determine anything. Well, yeah. And the guy went, like, shut up. Like, yeah. Trying to tell, like, no, just let me play. Yeah. Well, I'll, they got to keep I, you out I of know the, I have, like, five minutes. They had to keep you out of the play. menus. <laughs> yeah, that was... Uh, when he finally let me play, the first thing I did was try to go to the menus and get that. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe that's why they don't just let you play. Well, but, yeah. Um, obviously. Anyways, uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Uh, I own it. I own the digital copy. I know. Uh, you're part of the problem. All my physical games are going to go away one day. I'm sorry. The physical copy, bare minimum, $75 for the starter edition. You get less ships, less weapons, less characters. It's literally the worst deal out of anything I've ever seen. It's probably my biggest criticism of the game is how they're, how they're offering the game to, to people pricing wise. And it's it, 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 as bad as I think it is in the United States. It's worse elsewhere. Uh, in the UK, it's like 92 pounds or something. Holy. That's both for the digital or the physical starter edition. So they're the oh. same price, which fixes one issue I have with the $60 digital versus the $75 physical. But it fixes it in the wrong direction. It increases the price. And over there, a brand new game coming out is usually about half that price. Hmm. So it's mm-hmm. charging you double the price of a normal AAA new release in the UK for this game, for the digital version. Like, physical, That's... you could try to argue there's a physical item in there. I don't think that means the game is worth twice as much. Mm-hmm. That's like charging 120 over here. It's crazy. Uh, but this pricing strategy being done by Ubisoft, uh, just across the board, I, I think the UK and Australia are probably the worst cases. Australia is always really bad. So it's it's hard for me to ever look at the Australia situation and be like, oh, well, that's Australia <laughs> that's, for you. That's terrible. Well, that's government always terrible. The companies. But in the UK, I, I can't really say that that is a uh, government issue. That's an Ubisoft issue wanting to charge you more. Um, and mm-hmm. I, it's obviously not something I think is a good deal uh, for consumers. Now, it's interesting because I've always... <laughs> the I, if you guys don't know i'm like the master of the controversial opinions um what no. i i don't know how i have any subscriber base when i say things like i'm about to say oh i think AAA video games shouldn't be 60 dollars anymore there's two ways to go about it does your triple a video game run on day one microtransactions dlc and just day one dlc and uh loot boxes then it should be at least half the price, if not a free game. Like a Fortnite. Fine. Have your microtransactions. It's free to play. Yeah. If you're not going to have any of that content, right? You're not going to have the microtransactions. You're not going to have um, the day one DLC, although Starlink kind of has that. Uh, and you're not going to have any of that kind of stuff. Then the game should be more than $60. The logic, I, I, I hate using this logic, but it's the truth. It's inflation. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I paid a dollar twenty-five for gas. Today, I pay three. Yeah, right. Like that, a dollar twenty-five a gallon to three dollars a gallon. Everything else in my life has become more expensive, except video games. Like when people talk about video games is such an expensive medium, I'm like sixty bucks today. It's like a tank of gas. Yeah. When I was a kid, that sixty bucks would have been like five tanks of gas. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> It's an interesting point that we're at today where, like, the one entertainment medium that went from games being made by 10 people for it to be a AAA game to now having hundreds of employees and millions and millions of – hundreds of millions of dollars invested in development are still costing the same. And people wonder why microtransactions and loot boxes became a thing. Now, I know Jim Sterling's point he brought up when he made a video on this recently where he said uh, – no, some of these games are making plenty of money without the microtransactions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, this is true. Games like Call of Duty, games like Assassin's Creed, they don't need this stuff. They're doing it because of greed. Yeah. But there are some games that do need this stuff to survive. And I, this is what, what happens. Instead of the game prices increasing, they said, screw it. We can make more money by microtransactioning and loot boxing you than we can if we just increase the price of the game. Plus, the company that increases the cri- increases the price of the game, what's everyone going to be saying? How dare you? Mm-hmm. 
how do you think your game is worth eighty dollars when all the others are sixty? You know how hard it is to increase the price on that stuff. It, this happened actually with Blu-rays and DVDs for a long time. Remember, mm-hmm. DVDs were twenty, Blu-rays were thirty. Well, now the base Blu-ray is twenty. The one with the extra scenes uncut is thirty. And people hated it. They hated it. They hated it. But they just stuck with it as everything was going streaming. And now that price is just normal. Like, you want a day one uncut extra scene, you know, mm-hmm. br- Blu-ray. Or you want a 4K Blu-ray at that. It's going to be 30 bucks. You just know it's going to be 30 if you want a day one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and people just accepted it because they refused to change their pricing strategies because everything was going to streaming. Like, why would we worry what the few people that buy these are saying? Like, let's just keep it at these prices. They're going to have to accept it. Happened with gas. Happened with everything. Milk is now twice as much as it was when I was younger. Like, everything. Like, it it sucks. But you know what? If it just stays there and you want to keep enjoying the medium, yeah. The difference with DVDs and Blu-rays and all this stuff is it happened across the board. Whereas, like, one company does it doesn't mean the rest of the company is going to do it. Especially when they're making all that loot box and microtransaction. Oh, yeah. Um, So, why does this all matter? Uh, Not only because Starlink has this varying price points country to country between digital and physical, um, but because Starlink's number one issue is exactly those price points. Um, I bought the $60 version because it was the best deal. There's technically a digital deluxe version as well because, I mean, it's Ubisoft, so of course it's a digital deluxe version. And the digital deluxe version gives me like uh, one extra ship, three extra pilots, and four extra weapons. And guess what? That's still not everything. I would have to spend an additional, well, I think it was $70, so $150, bucks, to own all of the content that's in the game. Now. Wait, what? Now. <laughs> yeah. Now, to be clear, you don't need this content, okay? It is optional content for a reason. It is not needed. You can get through Ooh. the entire game with one pilot, one ship, one set of weapons. You can play the entire game that way, but the game's not built that way. It's built for you to have multiple pilots. Mul- well, you can get by one pilot, but multiple ships, multiple parts, interchangeable mm-hmm. weapons. The enemies are designed differently for different weapons. Mm-hmm. Uh, the puzzles are designed differently for different weapons. So, like, there is, uh, yes, there's puzzle elements in the game. Um, there is a lot of uh, interesting stuff in this regard. So why did I go with the $60 version? Well, one, the $60 version was the best bang for the buck. You didn't get enough extra in the $80 version for me to justify it. And I just told you, I'm someone that thinks games should be more expensive. But this is a case where I don't know about this game. Because I've talked openly on live streams in the past. Breath of the Wild, what's what's Breath of the Wild worth to me in hindsight now? I'm like, I paid 60, you know, well, we paid 100 because we got the Masters. Yeah. But let's just say base game. Well, Well, in hindsight... What value does that game have to my life? In hindsight, I probably 100, 200 bucks. I probably might have paid for that one single experience of how mm-hmm. much I've spent. I mean, it's just like for you, like Super Mario 64. Like, what mm-hmm. is what? I mean, you might have paid 104 dollars. Yeah, right. Back in the day yeah, because game pricing wasn't standardized then. But um, like that game and how much that game means to you. Like, what would have you paid in hindsight yeah. for that experience? Probably significantly more. And this is where like the pricing of games and even with the pricing of what Ubisoft is doing with Starlink, there's a lot of personal subjective value to there. Mm-hmm. So like to you, if you want all the physical stuff, right? You're buying all the physical parts and ships. It's two hundred and forty dollars USD to buy everything. But you're getting all the physical toys with it. Good lord! So but yeah, I, yeah. So that's no, the thing. I, that's it's a like, little bit better. Like, like it, it, I mean, it's a little still, bit more understandable. It, it makes me scoff, but then I'm like, but just like Amiibo, you're it's, getting physical. It's items. understandable. Um, more understandable, I should say. But that's always been the issue with Toys to Life. Yeah. The issue with Toys to Life has always been the massive monetary investment to have everything. Yes. Um, so that's why most Toys to Life games, no one actually has everything. Um, and you just buy the characters you want or the things you want and you live with it. Um, and, and Starlink's that way. So I, I don't, I don't want to chastise the pricing of the physical version too much in so much that it's just following what all Toys to Life games have done. However, I will say one thing. The fact there's no – like the Toys to Life stuff's optional, right? This isn't like um, Disney Infinity where you had to have the characters. Right, right. The Toys to Life stuff in this game is optional. It's an optional Toys to Life game. That's why there's a $60 digital version. Mm-hmm. Why is there not a $60 physical version? Mm-hmm. Standalone physical version that gives you the same in-game content as the, as the digital one. Why? Why doesn't it exist? Heck, why does the starter kit for $75 not include – 
all the same digital stuff. Is it because you think people won't buy the physical stuff? Fine, then include the physical stuff in with the starter kit that's included, and they're not going to because each ship is like twenty five bucks a month. Like they're not going to, but it, it's it's baffling to me the price disparity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like having physical copies of games. Now there's a there's a second criticism of the physical copy is that only half the games on the card, so you have to download six gigs. This is a topic I'm not we're not covering this week, um, and I'm not 100 blaming Ubisoft. Uh, we talked about game cart sizes in the past and cart pricing and stuff like that. New information's been coming out. Uh, it's apparently even worse than than the worst case scenarios we thought. Oh, fantastic! Um, there's literally third parties that are refusing to release games on Switch because of how much the cards cost. Um, so if you guys don't think those cards are a big deal, Nintendo's got to do something. They they really got to do something. But I'm gonna make a separate video on this, and maybe it'll be a future podcast topic as more information comes out. But. Um, so I, I'm trying to forgive them since I have this additional information, but on the consumer end, it still sucks. Yeah, like you definitely. Couldn't, you couldn't use a 16 gig cart and put it all on there. Of course they could have, but they didn't. Yeah, it's expensive. They don't know how much many copies are going to sell. Um, but you know the counter argument I have for them is, yeah, but you're charging 75 to get it. Yeah, but then you're also getting a physical toy. So then I'm like, well, fine, then charge 80, charge 90. Yeah, charge what you're charging the UK people, 92. Fine. It sucks, but you're getting That's the full game on the physical odd cart. Price too. If you get the full game on the physical cart and you also get the physical items, I think enough people still would have bought that version of the game yeah. to justify it existing. I think yeah. it still would have, but whatever. So that's yeah. all. That, I mean, what are your thoughts on this in general? Like all this pricing. That, this is know. what sucks. Because, guys, I'm going to tell you something right now. Starlink's everything I thought it would be, and then some. And this is why we're spending so much time talking about it, because this is what's going to prevent people from, from buying this game. Yeah, well, I know my friend Chris, he was like, I'm not getting Starlink because of the toys. I'm like, you do realize they're all optional, right? Everything is optional. He goes, oh. So they, I can't remember exactly what else it was. He ended up buying the, you the digital, the, the digital locks. Oh, good. Good. oh, you went to the little locks? Yeah. And I'm um, not going to argue with someone who does that. The game... right. For based on what I played, I would you know, two hundred forty dollars for all the physical. I mean, the game's worth more than hundred bucks to me already. But yeah, it. it I, I understand the concepts behind it. If it wasn't Toys to Life, this won't be a thing, right? You would just have the standard version that comes with the standard content and a digital deluxe version that probably has everything else. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason the digital deluxe version does not have everything is because they think it would be unfair to the Toys to Life people that have to spend so much money yeah. to get all that stuff. Yeah. And that's it. And by the way, if you own the physical version, you can still buy these items digitally. It's not you can't get them digitally instead. Yeah. And they are cheaper digitally, but not by a whole lot. Um, I think they're like the price is like cut in half. Like if you want if you want a pilot ship and weapon combo, uh, I think it's like twelve something instead of twenty five. Uh, so and that I mean I, it, that's the thing. Like, if the Toys to Life thing just didn't exist, mm -hmm. I don't think these prices would be this insane. No. They'd probably still do it because they're Ubisoft. Yeah. But uh, it would be much more reasonable. It, it would be, we'd be talking about a whole different story. But it would be more reasonable right. pricing, at least. Like, this is, like, yeah. not only bad pricing, it's just... It's a turnoff for a lot of people, and especially anyone who wants a physical copy knowing they have to spend 75 and knowing they get, like, a nerfed game... Because they bought the physical copy, not just because they have to download half of it, but also because you don't get as much content as you do if you would have just bought it digitally for sixty. Right. It, it's, right. Especially heck, digital deluxe for eighty. Spend five dollars more, and you get way the hell more content than you get for seventy-five. Mm -hmm. And I'm always conflicted. Yeah. Because behind all this bullcrap is a fantastic game. Oh, I know, right? This game, guys. I talked about how I think we both talked about how it gave us that feeling like Breath of the Wild in 2016 at E3. Mm -hmm. Where like you play it and you just know this is special. Mm -hmm. like oh, definitely. It's just unlike anything you've experienced before. People have been comparing it to, to Star Fox and No Man's Sky. I'm sorry. And Star Fox and No Man's Sky can't hold a candle to this game. Yeah. This game is 
mm. then you just go crashing into planets and call it good. Yeah. I mean, there, <laughs> there are some things about it. Um, you know, it's not perfect. There's a, there's a lot of repetitive stuff in it, and I understand repetitive things exist in every game. But I mean, yeah, not enough. You know, I'd argue there's not enough enemy variants. I, I'd argue a lot of the side quests are exactly the same. I mean, yeah, I get that a lot of quests, like an MMORPG, is an example, are a lot of fetch quests, but they try to vary up the fetch quests. Yeah, go to quests. this spot, mine this mineral. Go to this spot, mine this mineral. Go to this spot, hack this device. Which means you just have to kill some enemies and then you have it. <laughs> Hack this device, then mine some minerals. <laughs> so it's like, it, 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 it does need more variants, but this is why, like my impression video on it, I said oh. it's it's a great game. Don't worry. It has a perfect foundation for yeah. an amazing IP. Yeah. And my number one concern is because of this pricing strategy. Mm-hmm. Not enough not people get out there. We're never going to get another one. Yeah. Well, don't worry. This is all that stuff that you're asking for. We'll come out in the next DLC pack. <laughs> they haven't announced DLC for it. That wouldn't surprise me. I, I think it has to sell enough. I think the reason it's got to sell enough copies before they worry about DLC. Yeah, it's a new IP. So usually Ubisoft with their new IPs, to their credit, they're a bit safer with the DLC practices. The problem is they from the very beginning. Star Starlink's a conflicting game because I want to get mad at the at the pricing strategy over Toys to Life, but the game was Toys to Life from day one. It started out. Yeah. The developer said it was always a Toys to Life game. It wasn't something they tacked on later. Yeah. So it was built around this concept of Toys to Life. So it's hard for me to get mad about it because we wouldn't have the game we have today, possibly without that 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 uh, whole idea of Toys to Life. But at the same point in time, and, and the funny thing is, they were actually targeting this game to kids. It was supposed to be targeted between the age group of eight and twelve. Huh. Um, and you could tell a little bit in the story elements that they're not as deep as they probably could be for some adults specifically because just like with Star Fox, like kids are going to play it. Mm-hmm. So they, they wanted, you know, at least the target audience is kids. I don't know how many kids are actually playing it. I don't know too many kids that were asking for Starlink. Yeah. Right. But, um, it's, it's just one of those games where it, it's in an, yeah. It feels like a Nintendo made open world space game. And you know Nintendo makes it makes you know the, their games for everyone. Like Breath of the Wild, sure it should can be played by kids. Why not? Yeah, definitely. I mean I, how does this stuff bug you? Or does it not? I, I don't know. It I get both sides of it. I understand that yes, of course the the actual toys part of it's going to cost more because you You're physically physical item. physical item, even though it's plastic. Right. <coughs> I mean, hopefully. I mean, they seemed fairly durable. No, I don't I mean, think it's like a, it's a. They made it with plastic that kids can play with. Yeah. So it, yeah, stuff might snap off eventually, but. Yeah. For the most part, it's it's. As durable. long as they aren't sitting there going. <laughs> it's durable enough. Like you're not getting yeah. like high quality, um, not even like amiibo style because the amiibos aren't meant to be moved right they're stationary yeah most of them yeah guardian amiibo aside yeah yeah um so they don't like i i would argue yeah amiibos are really durable but you don't have to move them for for things you have to move and always put your hands on right i think they're durable enough for that right 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 but and so i mean i understand the whole price differential in that part of it. it i just don't know if there's a really good way to actually go about this it, it the pricing i because yeah, you don't want to make people who go to Toys to Life to feel that they're getting gypped. Right. Compared to ev- because then nobody's going to buy the, to buy the toys, really. Digital. You don't want to make it strictly Toys to Life because then you're restricting your sales because people will just ignore it because it's Toys to Life. Toys to Life, yeah. So, it, like, it's it, a really bad spot to be in. This is why Toys to Life games have gone away, right, by the way. Right. It's too expensive for people to really get into. And there's been some good, like Disney Infinity was not a bad Toys to Life game. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just so damn expensive to get into. Oh, yeah. Even well, when they started giving the game away for free, figures weren't free. Yeah. And there was hundreds of them. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I just don't know the fix for this. I, I mean, I could tell you the fix for it. Don't make it a Toys to Life game. No. Well, yeah. You can't do anything about that now. But I hope it sells well enough that they make a sequel that, sure, maybe it's backwards compatible with the toys, but otherwise isn't adding new toys to the mix. It's its own standalone game. Yeah. Well, a sequel, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right, it right, right, right. It's not built around Toys to Life. Because my frustration here is that Starlink is so good. So many people are going to miss out on it. 
Yeah. Um, no, I, I get you. I mean, more people are going to play it because Star Fox is in it than they were before because people really want the Star Fox game. And a lot of Nintendo based reviews are coming out being like, oh my gosh, this is like the perfect Star Fox game. And I'm like, it's not in a my impression. Star Fox I, I game. I hit on this note, like, it's not a Star Fox game. Star Fox is in the game. You can play a Star Fox and fly in the arc of the might, entire game. And that might make you feel like it's a Star Fox game. And if you want to pretend in your imagination it's a Star Fox game, hey. you can. But remember, this is Starlink. It plays nothing like Star Fox games. There are aspects of it that feel <laughs> Star Fox. Yeah. When you get um, you come up on bandits out in outer space and uh, you're in dogfights, like that reminds you of the open areas in, in, Super, in the, the 64 version where you get to the end and you try to take out this tower and then there's like the enemies flying around. Mm-hmm. And get kind of, that reminds me of Star Fox a little bit. But then it doesn't because the area doesn't just end. There's not like an end zone that makes you flip around. You could just keep going and ignore that they're even there. Yeah. Bye. Come and do that in Star Fox. Yeah. Uh, you're not even in Star Fox Zero when you had some of the open space battles. So it's not a it's not a Star Fox scene. You could I can understand why people think because Fox is in it on the that's another thing too. I never considered this because I was never even looking at this for Xbox and PlayStation. They pay the same prices but get less content because Star Fox content's not in their game. So that's like they're even, yeah. they're even getting like double screwed because yeah. they they've been advertising this game with Star Fox the whole yeah. time. Um, all the press copies they sent out to reviewers were the Star Fox version on yeah. Switch, but yet here you are on Xbox and PlayStation with this brand new game that you probably know nothing about because it feels like they've just been targeting Nintendo fans ever since the Star Fox collaboration. Yeah, kind of. And it's like. I mean, could on Nintendo? <laughs> the only thing I can think of that might be the saving grace here is if the Switch version is just significantly more popular than anything else, that this could end up becoming the pseudo Nintendo IP moving forward. Yeah. Where Ubisoft and Nintendo just partner up and Nintendo ponies up to make a sequel and they just say no to more Toys to Life stuff. Yeah. Or Possible. No, knowing, knowing, knowing that partnership, guys, it's going to... It's, it's going to be more Toys it's to gonna, Life. Oh, it's going to implement Amiibos into, oh, the, of into the pilots and... Of course, <laughs> it's gonna get you're gonna crazy. you're gonna end up with this ship three times the size well, in order to fit. Amiibo? Now they can all be pilots in the game. So how does Mario fit in that? Oh, because he's been in outer space before, you know. Uh, yeah, because Mario Galaxy. <laughs> Mario Galaxy. <laughs> Don't worry, that Guardian <laughs> that can fly the ship too. Yeah, the Guardian. <laughs> It don't be his own ship and then can, yeah. his arms come out can, and can he just can he just be his own ship just floating through outer space like, I mean, there were gonna be aliens in breath of the wild at one point so i guess maybe a guardian could yeah. go to outer space why not <laughs> try to make all the loop there's aliens in majora's mask yeah uh-huh. that, oh there it is there it is yep there it is there's the there's, there's connection there's always a connection i'm waiting for splatoon's connection to outer yeah. space it's gonna yeah. happen yeah it's gonna happen. There'll be some Smash. connection. I, I, th- yeah. Well, there you yeah. go. They're in Smash Bros. Everybody's in Smash Bros. Yeah. in outer space. Yeah, yep. Eric, go. Yep. All of them can be in outer space. <laughs> <sighs> I don't want this to happen. Someone might, might be thinking this sounds like the greatest game ever. Oh yeah, no, no, not quite. I mean, could you imagine that as a Toys to Life though? Me. Could you imagine that the ships would be like this big? I mean. It, Good and, Lord. And I have to give Ubisoft a lot of credit because they did it with Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. They made a fantastic original game mm-hmm. with Mario characters in it. Mm-hmm. This game wasn't even originally built around Star Fox, but somehow they got Star Fox tacked into the game that doesn't feel like it's tacked in. Yeah, it feels right. natural, the story yeah. and how it gets in there. And it just seems believable because you're out in the universe where there's all these aliens and races. Like the, how they did it makes me feel like you could almost take this universe and have them run into people from Star Wars. Well, like yeah, it just yeah. if it, it well, there works. You go. There it, you go. It's so cool how the, how they did it and how they made it feel natural. But well, of course you do realize it's how not they, a Star Fox game. You do realize how they get Link in here, right? Oh, <laughs> well, it's it's Starlink. Oh, so, oh, so Link has to go to the stars. Oh, duh. Jeez, well, Breath of the Wild too. Yeah. Yep. Starlink. <laughs> it is Starlink too. Crossover. Oh Lord. Hey, we did compare it to Breath of the Wild. We did. Open world. We did. They are. Just, oh, gosh. Finally get to find out what planet Termin is on. Yeah. Heck, I don't even know what planet Hyrule is on. Is it even on a planet? I don't know. Uh, sure. It's it, it's just a fascinating thing to me. Uh, <laughs> it's, on a, it's just Hyrule. It's its own planet, and it's got the different Hyrules all over the planet. Oh, you yeah, can just fly around the planet, and you can just all the various versions so. of it. <laughs> So many death mountains, all of them yeah. roll up at once, and the planet shoots up. 
<laughs> it doesn't need a sun. Yeah, right. It's got enough. It's got its heat. own sun. It's got enough internal heat to keep it. Anyways. Oh lord, you guys. We're diving too far down this rabbit hole. <laughs> I, I, I just yeah. I don't think you have Starlink yet. No, um, I am planning on it. Has uh, your friend? I need to get a bigger. About it? I need since to get. Let's say you started playing it. I don't know yet. Um, I, he was just picking up a bigger, uh, memory card. Oh yeah, yeah. That, so that and then I'll probably need to do that too. But. Yeah, I know. I'm at. I, I think I'm at two hundred two fifty six, and I think I need a four hundred. Yeah, I, I, you know what I think you just went the one twenty eight. I should. I should have hit you, guy. I should have hit you up. Um, a couple weeks back, I actually did a, a video on it and sold a whole ton of them. There was a there was a twenty four hour sale on Amazon for Sandus memory cards, and like you can get the four hundred one for a hundred now, which is the oh, cheapest geez. it's ever been. Yeah, uh, you can get like the, it was like the two fifty six. You can get for like twenty five bucks. Oh Jesus! Yeah, and I. It never even crossed my mind to be like, hey, Eric, if you're looking for yeah. a Switch card or yeah. your friends, yeah. now on Amazon. Yeah, now, I yeah. Never, Thanks. I made a video about it and watched yeah. my content. Yeah, damn it. yeah, I understand. I had affiliate links in there and everything. Holy cow. We actually sold a ton of them. Did you put it on the website? <laughs> no, of course not. And that's what sucks. I never hit our 60,000 plus Facebook group that might have actually bought some. Yeah. Uh, but. Anyways, like if that flash sale happens again, we do a Black Friday sale coming up. So now it's kind of like it's probably the only I don't even know if Black Friday sales are going to get that low. So we'll have to wait and see Um, because I need a new one now. I can't afford it. And that's the thing. The one I need is the $100 one. I didn't have the $100 that day. I was like, of course. Mom? Yeah, right. Mommy? 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 Can I borrow back and pay you back $5 a month? Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Promise you'll eventually get paid off in a few years. Um, yeah. More than a few years. It would, that yeah. would be a very long term loan. Yeah. For $5 per month. Um, anyways, uh, I think it, it's so hard. Like, outside of my impressions video, it's so hard to, for me to even talk about the game in the moment right now. Not just because you haven't played it yet, so I don't have a fellow person to talk to about it besides your E3 experience. Right. Um, but, guys, Starlink is so good. It, I, I played a whole what, sixteen I, minutes of it. Yeah, thirty, yeah, sixteen minutes of it. Yeah. And it was amazing. It is. I sung the praises of Octopath Traveler earlier this year, being one of the best games I played this year. I think Starlink, by the time I'm done with it, might be even better than Octopath. And I know it's not a fair comparison. There are different types of games. Yeah. Just like the Breath of the Wild comparison. It's not fair, but all, that's the only time I remember having that feeling when I first started a video game was Breath of the Wild. I felt that way with Super Mario 64. I felt that way with GoldenEye. Mm-hmm. Like that feeling when you initially pick up a game and instantly you know this is different than anything you've played before. And while there might be other games like it and similar, that one game, that that time that you picked up that controller, you're just like, man, this is magical. It's that Disney feeling. Mm-hmm. It really is that Disney feeling. When you go to Disney World for the first time in your life, if you've ever watched Disney movies and you walk into the magical kingdom and you're like, it's real. <laughs> That's what it feels like for the moment. And then you snap out of it and you realize it's not. Yeah. It's all commercial. Uh, but but like it doesn't matter. It, it's still just feels. Oh look, there's Snow White. Oh look, there's Snow White. Yeah. Oh look, there's Snow White. Yeah. Hey. But it feels magical, right? Um the, and that's the way it is with the games. Um like everything in the Magic Kingdom, it's all fake. Yeah. So is everything in the games. Hey. It still feels magical, right? And and Starlink is just a special game that unfortunately is mired in this stuff that I think, I hope I'm wrong, but I think it's going to harm the sales significantly to the so point too. we don't get another one. I want to be wrong. And I know plenty of people who have picked up the game, but I know plenty of people who aren't picking up the game because of the, the how they're selling it. Um, and I'm not going to tell you that, well, the game's so good, you should just pick it up anyway. So if you're principled on how they are charging this. Like I've told people in the past that if a game has microtransactions and loot boxes, but what I get for my $60 is still worth it to me, I'm still going to buy the game. Yeah. Um, give you a Madden as an example, right? How many times have I bought that? But Madden and ultimate team has been in there with riddled with microtransactions. Yeah. I don't but, use it, but I don't use it. I don't, I don't really like ultimate team. Yeah, so no. it doesn't matter to me. Everything else I got for the 60 was worth it. And so I understand there's people who have principles and they just won't buy it on principle, but I view it as, and this is what I say even for Starlink, this is my only argument for you to buy it. If you are if you didn't experience, like I, like if you experienced it at E3, you probably wouldn't care what it would cost. You would have picked it up. But for those that haven't even played it, 
I'll, I'll just say this. My only argument to ever buy a game that you're iffy on pricing for is you only live once. YOLO. More money will always come into your life as long as you're working or something, right? The paycheck you're getting now is likely not the last paycheck you're ever going to get. And if it is, it's probably because you died. And that sucks, and I hope you didn't die, and hope everything is going well with your family. But you only live once. And I hate the YOLO lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I really do. Uh Uh-huh. But the last thing I I tell my friends you want to do is have everyone around you tell you how awesome something is, but you, because of your principles, refuse to experience it when those principles are just, oh, it costs a little bit of money. Imagine if... Because of the cost of that Brewer playoff game, I told you we're not going. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was expensive and worth every damn penny of it. Yeah. That experience, like, yeah, I would like to get it cheaper. Everyone would like to get it cheaper. But yeah. yeah. Please. Yeah. What would I pay for a World Series ticket? That was the NLDS. Come on, Brewers. Yeah, right. By the time you guys hear this podcast, we'll know if the Brewers are in the World Series or not. Not looking good at the time of recording. Um, yeah. But I don't know. That's just we gotta go to the five star forum this year too. Yeah, well, no, we the thing is, I think I'm like ninety nine percent sure they're gonna be in the playoffs. So I'm like, if I'm gonna yeah. go and I'm only gonna go once because it's three hours away, it's gonna be a playoff game. Yeah, might go I mean, multiple. Yeah. I mean, if they're if they make it to the the NBA finals, I mean, I'm there. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they're gonna get past Boston, but if they do, <laughs> yeah, they do. you know, who knows? We took them to seven last year. I mean, it was yeah. no Gordon Hayward, no Kyrie Irving, but yeah. we still took them to seven. Yeah, and they got better. We should be better though too. Should should be. be. I don't know. Game one. We won. We're undefeated. Yeah. At the, at the time of recording. Yeah. I don't even know who we played tomorrow. See, I, I've been so wrapped uh, up with the Brewers, I haven't been paying attention to, to the Bucks schedule. Like, oh I literally... I literally just looked at it today. There's a Bucks fan site that I go to, Brew Hoop. I've been refusing to go. Here's the thing. This is the first October for me at this point uh, that, like, the Packers, the Brewers, and the Bucks are all relevant at the same time. No. Back in 2011, yeah. the Bucks weren't relevant. So yeah. when we Brewers were in the playoffs, I was like, okay, well, as long as the Brewers aren't playing during a Packer game, which they usually aren't, it's yeah. not an issue. Yeah. But like, the Bucks are always playing at the time of the baseball games. Yeah. We're just usually not here. Right. <laughs> so like, yeah. it's conflicting for me. I can't. I'm in sports overload. I I literally cannot absorb this much sports knowledge at once. Yeah. I can't hand, and I, I, can't I would say the Badgers are relevant, but nah. yeah. Well, they should have been, but they they blew that. Yeah. Twice now. Now they're yeah. definitely done. Yeah. Um, even if they win their their side, and end up winning the Big Ten. Doesn't matter. They have two losses. They, no, they I, know. Going nowhere. I know. I know. They'll, they'll get a nice Peach Bowl or something, and yeah, and we'll, end up we're winning. probably and back to the Orange Bowl. About, yeah. Oh man, look at all the games they won in a row. Now they're gonna yeah. get this year, and then just gonna I, a, I, I, Badgers. I'm tired of your crap. Yeah. I think. If there's one team I'm going to bandwagon right now, it's going to be the Wisconsin Badger football team. Yeah. Prove to me why I should be watching you. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I, I've, I've had it. I'm so tired of getting my hopes up and then just getting crushed. Yeah. See, at least with the Badgers NCAA teams, I usually don't pay. They play so many games. I don't really pay attention until I know they're good. No, no basketball. And I'm not saying I bandwagon it, but there's just it, it's really hard to catch their games sometimes. And you talking basketball? Yeah. Ah. And and they usually make the NCAA tournament, so I know there's going to be a bunch of games there. So I, I'll get on that. And and it happens that the Badgers actually went to the finals semi recently. Um, it's a bad memory because they didn't win, but that's just got well, I think we're used to that. Hole is done. Just, just getting a few things. Crushed. But like, yeah. like knowing us, when this podcast airs, Brewers will have hit Game Seven and lost, and I'm going to be crushed. Yeah, buddy. Anyways, I, I, I think we can probably try to yeah, swing it back to, on topics here. Are you sure? I don't know. What is our next topic? I don't know. Uh, let's you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's right in front of you. It is. I literally put it in the You have more it stuff is? on your paper than I do. It is? <laughs> you're more informed right now. Uh, topic wait, two. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're more... In, this topic you even researched. You're bit. more informed than I am on it. Uh, let's go. Let's kind go. of, sort let's of. Let's go. Let's go. What Pikachu? do we got? Pikachu? No. Uh, 2019 Switch game lineup. Awesome. So we are just going to take a brief look. We're not, we're not going to um, spend a lot of time on this topic. But I want to talk about games that are coming up here in 2019. Uh, just because we are in October. We're getting towards the end of the year. It's not really – I don't think there's going to be any more new announcements. We kind of know what's happening this year. So I think it's it, it's not, it's good before the holiday hype hits, before the Pokemon, you know, Let's Go Lands and all the stuff that we look. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Nice. <laughs> you can keep that in, Martin. <laughs> be, for, for our audio listeners, my fiance just walked around the corner and drilled me with a giraffe. That's fantastic. Yeah, you'll have to watch the video version to see how that one went. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> better be careful for more stuff. Like yeah, that. right. Dang no. giraffe. Sit. Sit. Stay. Nope. Hug it. There you go. Sure, why not? Good boy. Why not? Um. So, the 2019 Switch lineup, we're taking a look at... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. Um, <laughs> I can. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so the 2019 Switch lineup uh, is one of those things that um, I, I think is just nice to look ahead so people know if you're picking up a Switch this holiday, what do we know about next year? And it turns out, I, I mean, what? Is there like 30 games on this list? <laughs> Honey, this one will uh, get green screened out, you know? One, two, three. Okay, there's going to be more coming. Six, she must be trying to clean the playroom and chucking stuff 10, at me. 11, 12, 15, 15, 15. Oh, okay. <laughs> Eric's literally counting. 21! 21! Hey! Hey, can, this, like, this, this list can drink. All right, so Eric, why don't you... Uh, why don't we just go game by game and just mention something that excites us about each one? Okay, well, yeah. So fire, first. fire them three houses. Uh, Anything excites you about that one? You got any interest level? What's your hype level not. for Fire Emblem Three Houses? I mean, Fire Emblem. I know. I mean, it's. I know it's a good series. I, well, I don't well, really play it. It might not be for you. So. No, I don't play it. Okay, so, so. his hype level in the yeah. trash because he doesn't. No, like it's fire. not. It's he not in like the fire. trash. But in the trash. He doesn't like Fire. Oh uh, yeah. Uh huh. Because that's exactly what I said. You said you've never played. Ergo, you don't like. You've had how many years to play a Fire Emblem game? I never said I didn't like it. You, have you ever played one? No. Have you ever felt the desire to play? No. One? Then you don't like it. I could like it. I just haven't played it. You don't like it. Sure. We'll go with that, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to Fire Emblem Three Houses. Haven't really deep dove into a Fire Emblem game since Fire Emblem Awakening. And it's kind of, sort of, the return to a home console. So, excited. What are, oh, what this next one? Con- because Switch is a hybrid. Okay. Nintendo, Nintendo America. What are you talking about? Home I was going to say. What are you talking about? It's a home console. All right, next one. Luigi's Mansion 3. Right, what was your hype level on this one? Uh, I don't know if there's a roof on that. <laughs> it so just, it just got blown through it. Uh, yeah. Did you pick up Dark Moon? Yeah, I have Dark Moon. Okay. I was just checking because I was like, oh, you were just one of those people. I just love the OG, but I never played the second one. No, actually, I haven't played the OG. <laughs> you never played the OG? No. The <laughs> no. Oh. It's on 3DS now. It just came out. I'm not buying a 3DS game. Is that is that on principle? <laughs> no, it should be on Switch. <laughs> it's not. I know. So you're not buying it yes. on principle if that is not on Switch. Yes. Oh, man. You don't deprive yourself no, of the I OG. Know. I know. It is so much better than Dark Moon. If you really love Dark Moon and you're over three I did. through the roof, you got to play the OG. Oh, it's so good. Yes, folks. That is me. I, I, I'll, I'll say this to the cows come home. Luigi's Mansion, the OG, is significantly better than Dark Moon. If you love Dark Moon... And there you're goes, not going to think Dark Moon is anything. And there goes about 30 subs. <laughs> uh, no, I, actually, I think it might be a popular opinion. Actually. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But, but you know, there's those handful of people out there. Yeah. Luigi's Mansion 3, I mean, didn't think we were getting it anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, I thought there was a chance because we got Dark Moon that we would get a third one. Now it's going to be a back on a home console. Um, I'm I'm pumped. Uh, the little bit of gameplay we saw, it didn't really show much, you know. But uh, right. it looks exciting. Yeah. Looks great. Looks like Luigi's Mansion, and I can't wait to go to some haunted mansions and hunt some ghosts again. Yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll hit up the next one here. Uh, next up, uh, we have on the list is the 2019 Pokemon game, which supposedly is a new generation of Pokemon. Uh, the little bit of info we know is that it will be compatible with Pokemon Bank, and you'll be able to transfer all your old Pokemon that you know through Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon over. We're not sure about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. We don't know if that's going to have the bank involved at all. So that's kind of up in the air for that. But, uh, yeah, new generation of Pokemon. Um, excited? Not excited? I mean, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I mean, we, we're both going in on, on Let's Go next month because we promised our viewers right. we're going on that. And just, right. Because I want to have a serious conversation with you and then probably bring in someone who's, who's a big fan of Pokemon um, and just – kind of get our impressions on the game and see if you can get us back into it um a starter it, it's basically no. right people look at it as a starter game i think a starter game is the best chance you and i have of getting back into pokemon probably it also helps that it's really fun yeah 
<laughs> and looks and, phenomenal. And, and kind of a, I know, I'm a Gen 1-er. Oh, but, he openly admits it. But, I mean, I don't mind too. So, so what I'm saying is. But, yeah. I don't know if we could check your hype levels for the new Pokemon next year until after Let's Go Peach or Let's Go Eevee. I, and see if it. I want to see a little bit more you, concepts it, it on it. you to want to play more Pokemon. Yeah, I, I want to see a little bit more concepts on this as like, well. Yeah, I want more. Mm-hmm. Um, Because that's when I know, okay, maybe you will consider the new generation. Now, again, we don't know anything about it yet. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of unknowns besides the fact that it's compatible with Pokemon Bank. But um, we really don't know anything. So there, it it might build, like, uh, maybe it'll have Pokemon out in the overworld or something. We don't, we still don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. So, all right. Um, My hype levels for it are just kind of, I'm I'm about right here. Um, I've been more interested in Pokemon of late. uh, But again, and I know Let's Go Pichu, Let's Go Eevee is not a good, you know, level to check for a new generation game that's going to feel different. But I do feel like it's going to, Let's Go Pichu, Let's Go Eevee is, is going to check my fandom. It's going to be like, are you really a fan of Pokemon or not? It's going to check yourself and then it's going to wreck yourself. Yeah, because it basically okay. it's going to be, are you just nostalgic for Pokemon? Or do you that's, actually, that's probably are you me. actually a fan of that's Pokemon? That's probably me. Nostalgic well, we'll because if you can play yeah. this and oh, love yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. then that means okay, it's still in there. Yeah, a lot's changed. There's a lot of new Pokemon, all, but it doesn't mean we can't get into it. Right? We just maybe we need to be better eased into it. Maybe. And obviously, a new generation ain't going to ease us in it. Probably crap. not. It's going to throw it all at us when we're like, "What is going on? I just want my Pikachu." Dang straight. <laughs> Actually, no, no, I want my Charizard. Um. All right. Well, what's the next one? Yoshi's Crafted World. Thoughts? I uh, looks. Like it could be a decent game. I don't know if I'll. Def- I don't know if I'll pick it up, but it looks like it, it. looks like it could be fun. I feel like it's the Kirby Star Allies of next year, except it might be better. Yeah. And the reason I say it might be better, like Kirby Star Allies, is really good. Yeah. But out of all the Kirby, like we've had a lot of Kirby games the last decade. I don't know that it's one of the strongest ones. It's just okay. What, what, the world, what however, are you talking about? It's got the friend circle. <laughs> friend circle. <laughs> Uh, and and the friend line and the yeah friend, yeah uh, well, yeah friend star and, duh um, yeah. Yoshi's Crafted World that I, I'm interested in not just because of all the per- different perspectives it gives you and the beautiful art style it's it's a Yoshi game we're used to beautiful art styles at this point unique ones uh, it's because this was supposed to be a, a game this year mm-hmm. but it was delayed and we mm-hmm. don't know why it was delayed this they were still announced, working on the label with back it back in 2017. So working on what? They were still working on the label for it. Oh, you know that they're going to try to work that in there somehow. <laughs> it know, looks like it, a game. It looks like a game that is perfectly fit for Labo. But how? I don't know. They'll f- try to figure the some stick, way to. They're going to turn the flight they're gonna, into a joystick. They're going to figure out a way to shoehorn that in. You know it. Maybe it's got the cardboard. Man. I, if that's <laughs> why I got delayed, I'm going to cry. I I love Yoshi games. I don't know if I'm picking it up, but if I do, it's because of, I have a high expectation for it to be better because of the delay. Whenever yeah. a game is delayed as much as this one has been, because it's been like a full year delay, I expect more of it. Breath of the Wild got multiple delays, expected more, felt like it delivered. Mm-hmm. Um, a game, do, you know, it's not, I'm not going to bring up the, well, I guess I'll bring it up, but I'm not going to say I agree <laughs> with it. The, the famous Miyamoto quote that, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a bad rushed game is bad forever, but a good delayed game is good forever. Mm-hmm. And his basic his basic concept was that you'd rather a game be delayed and be good than be rushed and be bad. And that's always true, but it can still be rushed and be good too. So it I don't be. I don't know like I know it, that it can also be delayed and be terrible. It can also not be rushed and just land on time and be fine. Yeah, there's that. I mean, <laughs> wow, how many more how many Super more things Mario are there? Odyssey <laughs> yeah. wasn't delayed. Yeah, great. Yeah, so. <laughs> Um, Splatoon 2 wasn't delayed great it's high. there's plenty of examples of where like it's not true and then there's also been delayed games that still were terrible so from Nintendo so like I don't know yeah I'm hoping that this isn't one of those I'm hoping that it's awesome I have to remember it it's always been kind of a family friendly platformer has some difficulty to it prior Yoshi games but uh, for the most part it's always been like that that easier counterpart to Mario Mm-hmm. Um, so don't get mad when you find oh it's super easy it's always been super easy it's a yeah game. okay like Mario platforming is really not that hard either now it's Mario Maker platforming 
That's uh, a, I, don't, I don't even know if that's called platforming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're treating Mario like a pinball, keeping him yeah. spinning like crazy. <laughs> Wee! Anyways. Um, right. well, well, next up is uh, Damon X Machina. Um, we've seen a lot of this game. Is it Machina or Machina? <laughs> I, d- d- sure. Something like that. We're going to yell that in the comments. Probably. Uh, we've seen a ton of this game. They had it at TGS. <laughs> uh, not TGS. Uh, the Gamescom. Uh, they've shown a ton of gameplay for it. We saw it initially at E3 when it was announced. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't at E3, so we didn't get to play it. Um, yeah. Mech game. Mission-based. Um, lots of crazy stuff. Lots of crazy combat. Uh, it's using kind of a, uh, a, a cell shaded sort of art style. Uh, but the, it seems to have like a red palette thing. Yeah. Uh, so a lot like, and you can see that in the, in the box art for it. like, it's red and yellow. Like it's, it's got that kind of uh, color scheme to it, which is fine. Uh, that, that doesn't really bother me. It's diff- It's just different. It's just the art direction they went for. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? It's a brand new IP, hey. which which is nice to see, like Nintendo, another new IP. Right, right, right. right. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a mech game. It's, yeah, right, right. Pretty much, I think it's my the my same thing with like, me. I didn't play Xenoblade Chronicles X specifically because it had mechs, and some people played it because it had mechs. And I'm like, I, I just, I'm not into mechs. And the thing yeah. is, there's one mech game I like, and it's probably the most boring mech game ever made, and that's Gnome on PC from like the 80s. Way to go. It. I think I just How liked the you? graphics at the time. <laughs> graphics art. Yeah, admittedly. Yeah, I like I like pretty things. Not so pretty. See, look at this. Look at this. Oh, too old school on the art on this oh, Arizona Energy. Yeah, yeah. Man. It's not HD enough they, for me. They, <laughs> not 4K. <laughs> Slam it in your face. HD oh, enough for you now? It's only in one frame. Oh, oh boy. It's not even per second. It's like one frame forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next up, we got uh, this one. Is probably, I don't okay, know. If, you, bat- if you spin it real fast, maybe it looks like they're running. So I'm going to batch some of these together because... No, no. For those who don't know, for those I, I who don't know, there's a bunch of Final Fantasy games coming next okay. year. Okay. You're going to so actually... get 7, 9, 10, this next 10, one in 2, there with it? 12. Oh, okay. Um... Maybe 11. No, I don't, I don't know if 11's in there. But we're getting a whole bunch. We're getting basically all the Final Fantasies from um, 7 up besides 8. Uh, so, and these are like the originals. In, oh, except for 10, 2, and 10, I think were the remasters. Uh, so, whatever. We're getting all those. They're, they've been on other platforms. Whatever. We're getting them all now. Great. I think that's great. A lot of people pumped, especially for Final Fantasy 7. I know yeah. it's widely considered one of the greatest games of all time. I get it. Be excited. Yeah. The Final Fantasy game I care the most about, though, yep. is the one that is probably the over, least typed. and But it's the one that was probably the least liked and the least typed and is getting remastered. So it's actually a version of the game that hasn't existed before, technically. <sighs> what are we talking about, Eric? What, what's this game from our... Heck, I don't even know what I call my child. It's my adulthood. We played this as adults. Yeah, in yeah. In our we early did. 20s. Yeah, online. yeah, we did. At your house, at my uh, house, at Chris's house. Yes, that would be... F- Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered. Mm. High bubbles. Oh, um, again, I, I think I'm going right up there with Luigi's Mansion, and there is no roof on this. I had that that thing went bye bye a long time ago. I love Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, the OG, not not the the, the one that came out on Wii, because um, it wasn't Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. I'm sorry, I know it had the name, but it just wasn't. It was a completely different game. It was like a standard Final Fantasy. Anyways, um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. There, I have so many fond memories. But the thing is, all my fond... Like, you can play the game by yourself. You really can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and grind up your levels Although, and stuff. Although, again, I'm going to... friends, I wanna, it's so amazing. I want to beat the crap out of that... I can't remember what the heck they're called. Um, the little flying Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forget his name. <laughs> hey, give me the pot! Oh, I'm tired! Hey, do you take the pot? No, 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 give me it later! <laughs> like, like, it's... Like, you're supposed to be the pot bitch. Yeah. Stop complaining. I care... My character carries the pot and doesn't say a damn thing. Yeah. But then, but then, but I can't attack people when I carry the pot because it's bigger than me. It's just fantastic because you give the. It's like let me take it. You give it to it, and it's like three minutes later. Oh, I'm tired. You take it. What's Maybe the point of you? Maybe they'll alter those mechanics for single player play in the remaster. Maybe hopefully. that was what that was complained about single player play was that you have a, a side character that will carry the pot for you at times so you do your combat, but like the enemies will start running or you're trying to catch up to them and all of a sudden it's like it doesn't want to carry the pot anymore and it's like. I don't mind the pot mechanic. It's right. brilliant, especially when you have friends. It it's is brilliant. Um, well, and the story, the story oh, behind the story. it is fantastic. Oh, the story's awesome. Um, I'm really excited for for the remaster. 
Uh, it might be the one game that brings me, you, and Chris back together oh, yeah. again to play because it was it, the one game we I, played I do, together. I hope for one thing with this, a guide that is actually correct. <laughs> I hope for one thing with this, and that is that we don't need to use our 3DSs to also play it. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, that's it. Oh, no. That's no. I hope no. For, is that they don't require no. extra devices and cables. No. To make, actually, it probably wouldn't be cables. They'd, they'd, probably probably go, they'd probably go back to the Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bring back the Game no, Boy. No, no, see, don't say that because the Switch does support the GameCube adapter because of Smash Bros. No, so I said Game Boy, not GameCube. No, but listen. Yeah, okay. Because yep, it supports yep. the GameCube adapter, what are the cords that you would have to use on the GameCube? Version? Oh, yeah. So you'd have to have all the ah. OG physical cables. Ah. OG. Now, if it supports that as a nice optional thing, yes. Like if you're just like, oh, for for the people who remember, if you happen to plug in the GameCube adapter, you can play with. The I GBA, would so actually be okay that with that. Would be, that would just be. I don't even have a GBA anymore, but that would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. That that's just like a callback. It's a throwback. It's like, hey, by the way, if you remember, we are offering the OG play style if you want. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we're not really gonna like be like, oh, yeah, on the box, go buy these extra stuff. And no, we made it so you only have to have a switch or multiple switches and that's it mm-hmm. you're good um again we haven't seen it in action yet besides a little trailer and the trailer is great but the trailer doesn't show how it works with the switches right how it works without multiple screens right um so again i don't think it'll be an issue because i think how it's just gonna work multiple screens is unfortunately unlike in the past when you could everyone could play on one system i think it's gonna require multiple systems mm-hmm. um that's how they're gonna get around it for us, it won't matter because I'm pretty damn sure all three of us are buying that game. Oh, yeah. So I don't really think it's going to be an issue in my, no. in, my, in, my, in my only friend group I have that plays video games. Yeah. Uh, but but it's still um, never did. It's four players. I don't think I ever played with a fourth. I have a couple I times. I know you have. I don't think I ever have. I think it was always just me and Chris or mm-hmm. just me and you on mm-hmm. the side. Anyways, uh, so that's, that, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, Obviously excited about that. Yeah, the rest of Final Fantasy games are good. Yeah. Awesome. I, I'm, I mean, if you're into Final Fantasy, great. Now you'll be able to play like the whole collection on your Switch besides 1 through 6 because 1 through 6 isn't on Virtual Console or anything or on the Nintendo Switch <laughs> Online service that only has NES games. Um, yeah. Although they added Super Dodgeball. Ooh, they did, friendly. I haven't played it yet Ooh. on there. I've been oh, waiting. Because I, I kept telling myself the first time I'm playing is against you. Okay. <laughs> we might, might have to do that after this. <laughs> I know. I was kind of thinking that. Um, all right. Uh, what's next on the list after the Final Fantasy games? Uh, Animal Crossing 2019. That's saying it doesn't get pushed. You know what? I think I know how to get Darren back on a podcast. Yep. It's got to be an Animal Crossing podcast. Yep. Guarantee he will come. Oh, right. yeah. And he'll probably bring She Says and everyone else with Oh, yeah. Because, just because they're all hyped for it, too. I'm, for, I'm sure I don't need Darren for that. I'm sure I get a yeah. message. She Says, big dude, we're doing... Animal Crossing week. Yeah, but Darren will be... And he'll be like, what? And I'll but, be like, and you want to host it? Because you're a bigger fan than that. Yeah. yeah. And, and Darren will probably be peeved if we didn't ask him on for a, a I, uh, Animal Crossing. I don't think he'll even notice. I'm pretty sure he doesn't watch any of the content. Oh, there's he that will, too. Oh, Darren. For those who don't remember, he used to be the third member of this podcast. And he... I'll be there forever now. I promise. I have a new yeah. job. Blah, 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 blah. My own place. Good internet. And... Crickets. Insert crickets. I mean, he was in for one episode, I think, Insert after the good One episode? Insert crickets. Um, I know he's got a girlfriend, and he's moving on in life. Hey, but it's like, yeah, I mean, good for him. It, but, but he still plays games, because yeah. I see him tweeting about yeah. it, and I'm just like, why don't you want my podcast? Yeah. Anyways, it's okay. But it's all right, Darren. You know I love you. Um, <laughs> it's a little creepy. I haven't met him in real life, so yeah, I, don't, right? I don't... Take that back. I don't love you. I hate you. Um, yeah. Animal Word. Crossing. Pretty yeah. hyped. Uh, only because I haven't deep dove into Animal Crossing since GameCube. I have played New Leaf. I've played other Animal Crossing games, City Folk, etc. Uh, GameCube to me has always been the best, uh, probably because of nostalgia, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's but a possibility. I'm going to give this one a shot. I liked Pocket Camp enough. Like, I played Pocket Camp. I'm like, you know what? I still really like Animal Crossing. Maybe the only frustrating thing about Pocket Camp is it's just not a full Animal Crossing game. But I like it. I'm having fun. This is good. Yeah. I can see myself live streaming this. I can see myself playing this with other people. Oh, yeah. I can see myself in on a car trip or on a plane going to LA playing some Animal Crossing. I, I could actually I get it. I'm like, I, I actually like the, this is the thing with Pokemon. That what happens with Pokemon. When I play Let's Go Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, it's like, oh I still really like this. This is actually really fun. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hoping I, I happens yeah. with Animal Crossing. So um I'm gonna give it a shot. It's a big IP from Nintendo, really popular. A casual IP that some people play really hardcore. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that describes almost every Nintendo game ever made, if we're being completely honest. But, yeah, there's that. Um, yeah. What's I, next? And, and you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it up. It'd be, but it'd be interesting to see the changes that they make. I'm, well, I mean, and it's the first one in, in HD on a, on a home console. Right. I mean, you can argue on your phone, but like a full... Right, 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 right. No, no, for sure. So that'll be fun, too. Uh, next one... You know who I got to get on a podcast oh, oh, yep. for that? What? The Bit Block. Ah. Who always said, I'm calling you out, Josh Thomas. You flaked on the one podcast you said you were going to be on. You did not show up, and we've never talked about it. Yet you still pop on my live streams time to time to chit-chat around, and I'm waiting is it going to take an Animal Crossing podcast to get you out of the world work? I think so. There you go. He. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably didn't hear it. My fiance yelled in the background. It's because nobody likes you. Anyway. Yes, yes. Um, she's really good at ripping on me. Maybe I should have her on a podcast sometime. Maybe. It'll just be a podcast full of how can I insult Nate today? That sounds like a fantastic podcast. <laughs> Oh, great. Have both of you on there at the same yeah, time? Yeah, I don't yeah. think I'm going to survive. No. I'm going to walk off. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be Rip Nate. Yeah. It'll be the Rip Nate. We're going to keep ripping you even yeah. when you're not here. I'm like, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right. Next game is Saints Row the Third. Yeah. I, oh, like a 360, like a three port. Sure. Some people are really into it. Why not? I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, don't really have any other thoughts on it because I haven't played it. Exactly. Uh, next up is Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Uh, looks good. It doesn't. It's not like a traditional No More Heroes game, so I'm not sure how into it I am. But I like the concept. I like the visiting of different worlds from different indie games. I think it, it, it's an interesting game that I'll at least. It's one on this list I will consider purchasing if the price is right. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to be a sixty dollar game. Could be wrong on that. Maybe it will be. But if the price is right, I might consider picking it up. And it depends on the exact release date and the timing that fits in with all the other games. Um, this next one is interesting. Yeah. What do we got I, here? That would be Game Freak's new IP, Town, or working, that's the working, working title. title. Yeah. I, if I remember right Everything from Everything in the game the, takes place in, one to- in, in that town. Yeah. Okay. It's an RPG, no surprise, Game Freak. Mm-hmm. Brand new IP. Mm-hmm. I, I, it looks interesting. That's what I was going to say. If I remember right from the, the, the trailer that we saw, it looked it looks like a 3DS game. Decent. Yeah. But an no, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah kind of. I mean, the, all they've really made is like 3DS kind of games. So I I can't be surprised about that. But just because of, of that, the art style and the chibi art or whatever doesn't mean it's bad. Right. The the gameplay looked pretty good. Yeah. That's what impressed me the most about the little tease we got. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would agree with that. I. It's one of those things that hopefully we find out a little bit more about it. And, yeah, I need and, to see uh, more. But it's definitely a game that's piqued my interest. Yes. And here's the thing. I'm a big proponent of supporting new IPs. Earlier, we talked about Starlink. Yes. Uh, stuff like that. I If it's an IP that I enjoy enough of it, I want to buy it because I want to, like, Octopath Traveler. I want to buy, show support. Um, even if it's not perfect, even if there's issues with it, I, I want to keep supporting the idea of, like, there's my principle. Supporting the idea of these new IPs existing. Mm-hmm. And it just so happens everyone I bought this generation. As long as they're not trash. Yeah, and here's the thing. Everyone I bought so far this generation, I absolutely love. So yeah. like, it's been working out. I'm batting a thousand right now. This gym. There you switch. go. We'll see if it continues. If I pick up town next year, new IP. There you go. There you go. Um, next up, we have a Wii U port. Um, but it is the port, to be fair, that spawned Bowsette. No, oh, but we're talking about New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Um, and they added Toadette in as playable yeah. with a super crown that turns her into Peach. Yet. It's Peach, but since Peach is like, no, it's Peachette because Peach is taken. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Spawn Bowsette and all of the Ets you've now seen on the And internet. the Cronette. Wait. Um, <laughs> the super crown on the super anyways, crown. Anyways, that's not part of the game. It's just yeah. interesting. Uh I- has, uh, that's has pretty Ninten- much the only reason that people talk about it is because of Bowsette. Yeah, right. Has, no, has Nintendo actually, actually talking about the game? Has Nintendo actually said anything about Bowsette? No, no. Okay, I didn't know if they had were no, going to make any they comments. Had, or? They had they released a comic in Japan or a draw an, an art drawing of a concept they had at one point for Super Mario Odyssey that showed um, what what appeared to be a Bowsette like character mm. uh, using the crown to take over Peach and be, making her become like a you know, wearing a dark dress, dark, like basically uh, like Bowsette looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but 
I don't know if they did that. Like, where, where they released it, they never mentioned Bowsette. Mm-hmm. But very clear to me, it's like you're releasing this piece of art. Because... because... You're, just like, you're just trying to be like... No, yeah, we, we you thought know, of this first. You know, concept for Bowsette. We thought about this, this first. Technically, it was going to be part of Odyssey. Yeah. Uh-huh. We never went through Uh-huh. Today. Somebody want to check the date on that, uh, <laughs> on that uh, picture? <laughs> <laughs> What's that from the movie? You want to check the data? Oh, you want to check the data on that Lord yeah. <laughs> from Danko. <laughs> so, so check the data on that Lord. Yeah, Lord's a little stale today. Yeah, right. Um, anyway, <laughs> oh, 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 and that's one that's oh, gonna boy. get me in trouble. Yes, yes, it is. Oh no, there, there goes, there goes my ability to run ads on my videos. Thanks, YouTube. Yep, that's okay. Dan Cook gets to run ads, and he's the one. It's his joke. I know. Right. Um. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Uh. So yeah, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. It is uh, New Super Mario Bros. U is, I think, the only game I've ever beat with my fiance. So that's great. We never played the Luigi U stuff, so maybe we, uh, the only way I'll pick it up is basically if she wants me to pick it up. Cool, fun, great and she'll joy. Probably, she'll probably want me to pick it up because she likes those kind yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, next up, we have Trials Rising. This comes from Ubisoft. It's a continuation of the Trial series. I like uh, the looks Trials good. games are fun. Looks good. I mean, I've never played Trials games. Yeah, they're, they're they're decently fun. You can crash like hell and yeah. it's fun and there's lots yeah. of uh, ragdoll physics <laughs> yes the wild, there is but crank to a million yep <laughs> and it's fantastically so, hilarious when great. you when you ragdoll so this next game oh boy uh, we could do a whole podcast on this yes game. yes we could we can't, have, right? haven't we haven't we already done that we talked sort of? about it we talked about it this, this, remember we had the ninjala bat yes i know the ninjala yes yeah. you just gave it away i, I can't help it i don't I know what they're I, actually called i know so i just called it the ninjala bats yeah um ninjala ninjala possibly i could almost probably say our most hyped game on this list for next i, I mean luigi match three i i yeah. But, like, of a game I've... I, I don't want to see what game I've played, because that's unfair. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to play any of these. Yeah. Um, man. I'll say this. This is my most hyped new IP on this list, that's for sure. There you the go. only other one is Town, so... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So it's not a big competition. Not... Uh, Damon X Machina. Oh, Damon X Machina. Yeah. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> Ninjala. Um, oh, what get, is there to I, say I, about this game I, we haven't said before? I don't know. Go back and watch your battle. <laughs> it's. I'll say this. It's going to be off-putting for a lot of people, I think, initially. Yeah. Don't expect, like some people expect it to be I, the next Splatoon. I even compared it to that, but it's not the it, next Splatoon in gameplay. Right. It's different. It, and it feels stiff at first. I'm, yes. gonna, I'm warning you right now, the gameplay feels stiff. Like you're trying to move in direction, but it feels like the character only moves in like eight specific directions instead of being free moving. Mm-hmm. And I hated it at first. The more you play it, the more it makes sense. The more you start to understand it, the more you have... The more you're like, not just getting used to it, you're just like, wait, that this is why the movement is this way. Because of how this, how the gum works, how mm-hmm. the bats work, how the... What is it? The uh, What do they call it when you KO someone? Um, oh, the... Oh, Capo or something? Yeah, yeah, something yeah. Like yeah, yeah something. Um, the way all that works, and, and even like the dodge move that you like banish for like... Uh, a half second and then appear a few feet yeah. away. Sick dodge. It's like a, move, like like a little it's, dash. And, and like, this is just like what's in the demo. There's yeah. going to be different. Cut. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be different. Bats. <laughs> There's going to be, um, you know, you know, different abilities and stuff. So like, it's going to be even better, but like it frustrated me at first. And then you got not just used to it. You started to understand it. And you're just like, okay, yeah, the movement actually isn't bad. I almost don't want it to be free moving. Now I feel like I would be inaccurate if it was free moving because this is melee. Melee, melee you can shoot your gun, but it's melee, it's melee combat. Yeah. It's melee, melee, melee. Like, it's not Splatoon. Splatoon is yeah. not melee combat. Yeah. Like, even when people kill me with a roller, it's just because they happen to run over me. <laughs> or And if they didn't, then it's because they threw paint at me, which, again, not a melee attack. Yeah. So, it, uh, I... Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It, it, it's special. I can tell you right now, it, I'm going to own it, and there's going to be live streams. Oh, yeah. And Eric's going to be, I don't know, there's team modes and there's individual modes. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure Eric and I will be teams. And then you and I are going to be. be free for, or, or if it is free-for-all modes, we'll still, quote-unquote, be on a team. So I'm just warning yeah. you guys, if you play against us yeah. online... And one and two happens to be Nate and Eric. There's a oh, reason. Wait, yeah. Wait, no, it's just because we're the best players. Yeah, yeah, right? totally. Not because we're setting up yeah. kills for the other person. You mean kind of like, oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, except I didn't know you were doing it. Yeah, well. I knew the one kill that I got on you, like, okay. 
That must have been Eric because, yeah. because they just let me smack him. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. There's no way. Like, I should not have caught him yet. I didn't have him stuck down. No. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I, I, at first, I was like, man, that player, that must be the first time playing. Oh, no. No, I glanced over. That was Eric. <laughs> <laughs> but Eric was doing like, oh, look, Nate's about to wind up his bat. Let me gum this guy down for him quick. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if I would actually. I came close to To be fair. Yeah, yeah. Before Eric no, I, know. Me, I yeah. came close like yeah. twice. You did, you did. To take him first. I took second a couple of times. And only lost because of the bonus points at the end. Yeah. Of the, oh, yeah. oh, those bonus points yeah. were so much. Um, which that reminds me of Mario Party, actually. Yeah. Bit. So, again, Ninjala, uh, if you don't know what it is, look it up. You'll probably instantly know by watching gameplay if it's for you or not. I don't think it's going to be for uh, everyone. I think they're clearly targeting the Splatoon crowd. I don't even know, I don't even know if gameplay. I, I, yeah. Because watching the, the video, didn't look watching the video, watching the gameplay on the screen was just kind of like, eh. Yeah. It well, looks, we played it because we played every other Switch game at that point. Yeah. So it was the last one we hadn't touched. Yeah. They had a massive booth for it that you could not miss. And they were giving out awesome pins. And they were giving out, like, bats and stuff. So we're And like, awesome pins. Yeah, and swag. So we're like, you know what? Why not? We'll play it once. We played it once, and we're like, so that was good. Let's yeah. get every pin. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, that was our thing. We literally walked out and walked right back into line. Yeah, because we were like, we played it once, and we're like... I mean, we had we were sitting there talking to the guy who was running the line. Yeah. How many times? Just because you're like, oh, you're back. Yep. Yeah. Then at first they yelled at us about about going all the way around, cutting cut under the rope yeah. or whatever. And I was like, look, there's I mean, nobody I'm not cutting people. Yeah. No. I'm not cutting right. In front exactly. Of people. Yeah. And then I mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because like I get what you're trying. I get what you're trying to do, but I'm not going to sprint around. Yeah. Like, right. I'm just going to go under. Like why? Yeah. I'm not getting in anyone's way. Yeah. Um. Anyways. It would have been different if it was really packed. Then I wouldn't have been doing that. Oh, but, right, right, right. Um, yeah, it was... I think we hit it at the right time. Ninjala was... Well, yeah, because anyone who wanted to play at that point had already played. Yeah, pretty much. Um, including the one guy who apparently felt like he only played Ninjala for the three days. Yeah, right? Yeah, right? Because <laughs> like, he was undefeated? He's, he's the champion. He's undefeated. Yeah. He's been playing it all. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. Um, great game. Oh, I, I can't wait for it to come out. It's not going to be for everyone. It's not, I don't but, know. You're right. I remember watching the gameplay of it, and I was like... I mean, it looks... I remember my initial thought was it's another Splatoon game, but it's a knockoff. And then, then like I played it, I'm like, oh man, this is really fun. Mm-hmm. This is addicting. This yeah. is this is dangerous. This yeah. is yeah, this right? is my next 300 plus hour multiplayer game. Yeah, right. Like I jumped up to like 70 hours in Fortnite once it came to Switch in a hurry. I might get to 100 hours in less time than I did than it took me to get the. Which is not physically possible, no, but yeah, you know, it, right, right, yeah, it stays, yes, yeah, so, you know, I got because you. of how much. Oh, it's, <laughs> I can't. I can't. Yeah, I, I, know. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Here's the scary thing. Until we started making this list, I forgot about the game. I know, right? Because I haven't seen it in so long. I know, right? And it was just going to magically then, drop one day without me realizing it, and I was going to be all over Twitter. I forgot Ninja the releases today. Yeah, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh it, my it, God. It, the second you said that, you're like, oh, my God. How did we forget? Because it's just we don't see ads for it. No. I mean, no. So. Uh, goodness anyways, gracious. Anyways. Okay. Dragon Quest Eleven. Dragon Quest Eleven is the next one. Yep. Yeah, I I haven't played Dragon Quest, so um, yeah. I mean, Dragon it could Quest be Eleven good. looks really really good compared to other Dragon Quest games. Yeah. But uh, gotta play it. Don't know if I'm gonna pick it up, but I mean, it's there. Um, Chocobo Mystery Dungeon. These Chocobo games have been around forever. Why not? Never been. I a like big Chocobos. Propon- never been a big proponent. Are- I like Chocobos. Yeah. But I've never been a big proponent of the Mystery Dungeon stuff. So yeah, why not? Um, and this technically is not announced yet. But well, we know Orn it's coming. Just Dance 2020. Well, yeah, because remember, it releases in 2019. Yeah. That's why we, we, we didn't go with Just Dance 19, because Basically, 19 releases in me 18. picking up the game is contingent on me liking the music in the game. That's pretty much the way it is every year. Or if you dance to it on stage at E3. <laughs> well, I, I still didn't pick up Just Dance 2019. Oh, well, so. there you go. So, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. again, contingent on me liking the music. I do... I should look at the music in in, tw- in the in the 2019 one and see if mm-hmm. I actually want to pick it up. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, we'll see. I I like the, for those who don't know I like the just dance. Games. I think they're just good fun. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're good at it. It's yeah. just about I, I like dancing, so it's a, it's just fun and it's a nice workout. I just like to dance. And if you look at this guy, I, I just like to dance. I just like um, to dance. Anyways, right. all right. So topic that, three. That, 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 we're, we're done with that. Topic. Yeah. Topic one. Well, topic two is done. Again, Great. It was just going through the list and yeah. saying a couple things. Yeah. Our third. For not topic. spending a whole lot of time on that, we spent a whole lot of time. Well, on there's that. a lot of games. I know. A lot of games to get through. So topic um, three. Master trainers are being added to Pokemon Let's Go. You have you heard about this? Uh, I kind of sort of watched the video that you were watching, so I kind of picked up a little bit on it, but not okay. a whole lot. 
So this is content that's post game. Okay. Uh, these trainers are extremely difficult. There's a there's a one trainer for every Pokemon. So holy cow! 151 trainers. Okay. Um, so you're talking even like like uh, you know Charmander has his own trainer. So does Charizard. So does Charmeleon. Okay. Kind of yep, yep. Every Pokemon has its own. So at the very least, 151. Well, the, yeah. The because we don't have we don't know if they had the the extras. Um, oh yeah, like the Alolan Pokemon. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So at least 151 Pokemon Masters. Um. The fights you can't use items. You can only fight them with one Pokemon, and, okay. and in the in the little commercial they showed for it, it was the always same. like the same Pokemon. So I don't know if it's a ploy to get you to level up all 151 of your Pokemon to max level. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure, like, do you have to fight a Charmander with a Charmander, or can you fight it with it? That much isn't clear, because mm-hmm. all it said was no items, and you can only fight it with one Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that means you could try to counter that Pokemon. Like, if I'm fighting Charizard, can you that just Blastoise? That just seems I kind of... Know. What? That almost kind of like seems like cheating the system, though. What? Granted, I mean... I, I, if you I, use the counter to the right, Pokemon yeah. to beat the master yeah. of that Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's why I think, based on what they showed, they showed it always fighting with the same, same Pokemon. Same Pokemon. So I think it, you need to prove you're a master of that specific that Pokemon, Pokemon to beat yeah. it. Um, so that's how I think it works. But, you know, again, they haven't released a ton of details on it. Um, when you do defeat one of the masters, you gain a new title. And the goal is obviously to gain all the titles. Uh, and the title is basically whatever the Pokemon name is, and then your master, and then your name. So, mm-hmm. say my name in the game is Nate, so yeah. I would be like the Charizard Master Nate. Yeah. Or Pikachu Master Nate. Blah, 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 yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. um, that's really cool. What's also interesting is apparently these these master Pokemon will have s- new surprising moves, which tells you the master trainers can teach these Pokemon moves you can't teach your Pokemon. Don't worry, so we'll teach, that, tr- teach Charizard but, Surf. <laughs> Maybe. That's broken. But the, the thing is, I think the reason they're doing that is because they want this to be challenging. Yeah. They don't want no, it to just you. be two max you. level Charizards throwing the yeah. same oh, no, at I each know. other. I know. And whoever super hits or criticals first wins. Yeah, pretty much. Or whoever had the first attack wins. Like yeah, that, That's much. how it usually would play out. So they're trying to be like, no, look, these these are going to have brand new moves you're not going to know. So like, mm-hmm. it's going to – you won't be able to anticipate what they're going to do is basically the idea. Mm-hmm. These are oh. the best of the best trainers of these particular Pokemon, and you're trying to prove that you are now the best trainer of that Pokemon. They're going to bring back Surfing Pikachu. Probably. They're going to bring back Surfing Pikachu. Probably. Oh, my God. Probably. So – Oh, my God. I, I called it here. I called it first. <laughs> so – it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I, some people have reacted. Well, what's your reaction before I talk about other people's reactions? What's your reaction? Um, it seems like an interesting concept. I, I like. They've that. never done a concept like this. Yeah, yeah, so no, no, for sure, for sure. Um, it's it adds probably a whole hell of a lot more time to the game. I can tell you that much. The negative side of this, I heard people say, is, "Oh, great, they're trying to make us grind." Because you're probably going to have to max level 151 Pokemon. Yeah, probably. Um, but, like, I, I don't know how it's a negative. Like, why are you playing Pokemon? To catch them all. But, okay, then don't do this. Yeah, it's not like you have like to do it. Optional. It's not like it's, yeah, it's, it's at the end this of the is, end is, game this content. This is post game content. And it's just like, if you want to master that particular Pokemon, of course you need to max level the Pokemon to master it. You know that. Everyone knows that. So who... Get that weak sauce out of here. you had to get 151? You could just, you just get the titles for the Pokemon you want to master. Yeah. I, I know I'm going to get the Charizard master title because I want it. Yeah. I don't really care if I have all 151, at least in the moment. Maybe at the time I'll, I'll care. And yeah, it's grindy. Oh, if I started, like, I think I'm going to... I don't think it's as good of post content as we've seen before in other games where they added new Pokemon and new islands and stuff. But I think as a concept, I don't, I don't really hate it. No, I... It's optional. You yeah. Have, like, just because content's added to a game after you beat the main quest doesn't mean you have to do that content. Does, play Pokemon yeah. for the reasons you want but to play it. At that point in time, do you do you uh, that that hurts my brain on the hundred percenting? Well, because you hundred percent think if you're a completionist, yeah, they made you have to grind. But like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I hundred percent of the oh, game, oh, but I didn't hundred oh, percent oh, the. Oh, oh. Did you really hundred percent the game if you didn't max level all your Pokemon anyways? There's That's that. my thing. Yeah, if you're a completionist, that. you probably max level them uh, all anyways. 
Eh, yeah, I caught guess it depends multiple, on your. It depends on your. Depends on your your definition of completionist. Variant. Because the variance is in different Pokemon. Mm-hmm. That yeah. to me, I don't even know. Is it possible? One hundred percent Pokemon. If you have to literally have everything you could possibly have in the game, is it even? I don't even think it's possible. Well, it is probably is. Mathematically, I mean, it's sure is. possible. But. It is, but man, that'd be nuts. <laughs> Especially if we find out that the Mews that you get with the uh, Pokeball Plus, yeah, that we find out all of them have different stats. Now you need to buy multiple. Multiple of those controllers, and then hope you get the different <laughs> hope one. You get the right one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I. I no, <laughs> no, <laughs> just right now, no. So if they max level, uh, like max leveling, I think to me personally, I would always consider that part of one hundred percenting. Catching them all, great achievement. But if you didn't max level and see what all the moves are at those max levels, you didn't make the Pokemon as strong as they could be. I don't know if you really one hundred percent it anyways. That's always been my take with Pokemon. I'm not saying I've ever 100%ed. That's why I have it 100%ed. Mm-hmm. I've caught them all. And then I just kind of stopped because that's, that was good enough for me. Mm-hmm. So my thing with Pokemon, with any game, play it for the reasons you want to play it. I you was, don't like grinding? Then don't participate in this bonus content. I was two Pokemon short. Which ones? Which ones? Kabuto and Kabutops. Oh. And then I'm pretty sure somehow my freaking... Game Gear, Game Boy, and a Same whole bunch of my other... No, a whole bunch of other sh- got uh, donated. Oh, did your parents... Do no, I'm pretty sure it was just sitting in the back of the van uh, after a trip, and uh, we threw everything in the back for donation and just said everything in the back goes, and I'm pretty sure that just got... Yeah. Oh. Because I haven't been able to find it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. This is where you go around it to game shops and you keep asking. Oh, that was back. a while ago. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, still could be out at a game shop somewhere. You just got to be like, hey, what, like what, what version was it? Oh, I had red and blue. So, but I had, had a blue version. But well, what, what, what was your main version? Blue, blue. So like, I go around and just ask people, hey, Pokemon Blue, do you got Game Boy? Can I pop it to see if my save files on that one? Yeah. Just keep on, just keep yeah. on, hoping that your save files still exist somewhere out in the used game market. And y'all, y'all, sometimes you'll see like, oh, here's a. Oh, what was it? I was at a, a game store like a few years back where they had uh, Pokemon Yellow still sealed in a box. They were selling it for like one fifty, um, and then they also had Pokemon Yellow for like five hundred dollars, not sealed, no box, no no manual, no nothing, but it was on one hundred percent file. I'm well, like, what's the point? Well, the point is. You're basically paying for bragging rights. You're paying to say, look, I caught them all. Uh huh. That, I mean, and no yeah. one would know. Yeah. No one would know unless you brag that you spent money on that. And yeah. If you did. Because, like, cause imagine how hard it would be today where everyone's not playing those OG games anymore. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's not that hard because of Pokemon Bank, but, like, if you're doing it with an OG game, there mm-hmm. is no Pokemon Bank. So, mm-hmm. anyways. Ugh. So, the Master Trainers, I think, is a very interesting concept. Yeah. Just not one that, um, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it until I get there. Let's get mm-hmm. through the game and then see how I feel. I, I like yeah. it as an idea. Yes, it's grindy. Doesn't mean you could have to be, do it. Could be grindy. It, it, it's probably grindy. Probably. Yeah, we don't know with all these Pokemon. Yeah. It, it could be Master Trainer and their Pokemon are the same level as yours. I, I, don't, I don't know. We don't know how yeah. it works. Yeah. Um, as a little side topic to this, uh, someone asked Masada or Masuda. I always pronounce his name wrong. I pronounce all the Japanese names wrong. Let's just be honest. Unless it's Shigeru Miyamoto that I've heard 17 billion times. Yeah. Or Satura Iwata. Even then, I probably butchered that somehow, the first name. Um, he was asked about whether or not they would consider making an open-world Pokemon <laughs> game in the same vein as like Breath of the Wild. And while his response basically made it sound like everything would be on the table. They've, mm-hmm. they've never taken any idea off the table if they could find a way to make it work. Mm-hmm. So the response told me two things. One, an open world Pokemon game is possible. Two, the game we're getting next year is not an open world Pokemon game. Because, I mean, you could argue that maybe he just doesn't want to say anything about that one. So he right. doesn't want to. Right. But if he made it sound like it's just one of those ideas that's been discussed. And if they can make it possible one day, they will. Which that one day could be next year, but I I kind of took it as they're not really seriously considering an open world Pokemon game at this time. Yeah. Do you want an open world Pokemon game? 
Let, I mean, just like Starlight Breath of the Wild, go anywhere you want. Yeah, I know. Go. Yeah. Well, well, once you get out of the tutorial. Just, well, I mean, right. even Starlight, uh-huh. you yeah, have yeah, a yeah. tutorial mission yeah. and then you're free. Yeah, yeah. So once you are um, go yeah, anywhere, sure, do anything not? right away. I mean, why not? You want to go have your level one Pikachu face off against a level 100 Zubat, you go for it. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just, it's... I, hey, I don't know how it would work, though. Yeah. yeah. It's about how well you could throw a Pokeball. Yeah. And the type of well, Pokeballs you have, not about the level of your Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I don't know. It, it, it's been an interesting concept. It's Add the climbing mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> your Pokemon learn climb, and now you hop on the back of your Pokemon and it climbs cliff. That would be sick. That would be kind of cool. Add the flying and the swimming. Add the climbing then. Or, like, when it can be, like, cut. Yeah. I want to see that damn Pokemon's arm go through that tree. Come yeah. On, Scyther. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or you whatever. Know, or you could just. <laughs> did you see the one video where you can. Oh, where, so or vine whip the tree down. Did, did you see that one video where they were basically like ragging uncut? Because basically it's like, this thing is a small little bush. Just sidestep it. Yeah. Like, okay, there's it, a full yeah. size tree. This is a baby tree. You could just walk around it or walk over it, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there was a video out there that I saw and I was like, oh my God, this is fantastic. It's not really blocking the path. Yeah. <laughs> You're a kid. You but, can't crawl under? Yeah, right. But uh, no, it'd be, I, I think it would definitely be fun. It might make it actually a little bit more enticing. Maybe. I, I think the idea of it is. Mind blowing. Yeah, it's fundamentally different than Pokemon's ever been. Uh, Breath of the Wild technically wasn't fundamentally different because it used to be an open world game from the uh, the very first one that came out. So, I think it's an interesting idea. I just don't know how do you do, do it. Do we trust Game Freak? Uh, where question. is that question? Game Freak, a hell of a developer in the studio. But they've been stuck in just a certain way of making these Pokemon games. Yep. Do we trust them to do a revolutionary? I mean, this is my greatest fear for next year. Can I trust them to be revolutionary? Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, they did it kind of, sort of, with Pokemon Let's Go. But that was because the base concept was about Pokemon Go. So, like, mm-hmm. they were forcing in Pokemon Go stuff into traditional Pokemon. So, of course, it kind of, sort of, is different. But now when you're saying, okay, we're not taking ideas from anything else. we got to do it ourselves. Yeah. Can they make an open world po- Pokemon game? Because the one know. doesn't exist. Yeah. So like, there's nothing to be, no, I get you. Can't you. look back at, at the first Pokemon game to ever come out and be like, look how that game did it. Cool. Let's do that, but do it in 3D. Yeah. I mean, people still want a full 3D Pokemon game. I mean, that's that's a thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, not I, I get 5D you. or 3D, but the top down perspective, like actual first person style, um, or third person over the shoulder style. Yeah. I, I think it's a. I think it's a concept I want to see one day. I don't know if Game Freak's the ones to do it. Probably not. That's the tough part. So, in other words, we're probably never going to get it. Ask Ubisoft. Then again, well, no. If it's just a Nintendo IP, Ubisoft didn't do anything fishy. Like with with Mario Bros. Rabbids Kingdom Metal, nothing fishy there. Yeah. Uh, so if it's a Nintendo controlled IP, I think we're fine. It's like Starlink was all messed up, but it was technically not a Star Fox game. It's yeah. Tacked in. Yeah. So. An actual full crossover or them making a full Nintendo game. I trust Ubisoft with that. Ubisoft's got good developers. They make good games. Yeah. So Nintendo and Pokemon Company. Get Ubisoft to do it. There you go. Let them make their Assassin's Creed Pokemon edition. Just don't (laughs) save it on one PC and have it almost crash. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, This is the the last topic before uh, we we sign out here. Uh, Won't spend a whole lot on it because I'm going to do an individual video, but... Uh, you guys remember back when we talked about Philip Mewson? The biggest thing on the internet. <laughs> um, it was a really big deal at the time. Uh, it's actually our highest viewed video. One of our videos on that is that one of our highest viewed videos. Uh, Philip Mewson, uh, for those, just a quick recap. He was a YouTuber. He, he, I mean, he had a, a other careers before. He's graduated college and stuff. But um, he was a YouTuber that garnered a following, was on Spawnway's podcast, on the Spawncast. Uh, makes really, really well put together edited videos. Got hired by IGN to be the new Nintendo person after Jose Otero was hired by Nintendo themselves. Uh, he came in wow. and um, was heading up the podcast, was doing reviews and writing articles, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, he got busted for plagiarism and busted really bad. Like his review, um, he sold a review from Boomstick Gaming that was basically word for word. 
um, as word for word at as practically reading off the script. It, it was really bad. Mm -hmm. um, there were specific, uh, like entire paragraphs just read word for word. Like no doubt that this isn't inspired by this is plagiarism. Uh, and then it turns out after he got busted for that, and yes, IGN did fire him, uh, that almost like every review, product review, game review, or whatever he did on his YouTube channel, just called Philip, uh, was plagiarized, taken from somewhere. Um, and other places had actually talked about this before, but they were outlets that were so small no one really paid attention to it. IGN, you yeah. can't ignore. Right. Um, so it turned out that he basically faked his way to the position at Nintendo because he couldn't come up with his own original. He didn't have the time or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever excuses. Yeah, yeah. He, he ended up doing an, uh, an apology video that he never called an apology video to make it clear. Right. He just wanted to explain his side of the situation where he basically said he did nothing wrong. Um, he apologized to people he hurt, but in the apology, he's like, everybody well, this does is what this. everybody does, which just made everyone get mad. And we ended up taking the video down because of all the backlash over that. And then he just kind of vanished and we haven't heard about him really since. Um, he's back until now. Yes, he's back. Um, back again. No, no, he sorry. came back. I found out about the video because there was a thread on reset era that said Phillips back, uh, with an apology and explanation. He didn't apologize again. Uh, well, let me take that back. He put up a new video. The video is a product review for a Bluetooth um, dongle for Switch. What, you know, one that he calls the best Bluetooth dongle. Uh, and it, admittedly, the product itself looks pretty good. But this isn't about the product. This is about Philip. Uh, he starts off the video and he does. A, he, he says, you know, he's done a lot of reflecting, um, which I, I hope he has. <laughs> and then uh, he says, I apologize to anyone I've hurt. And then that's it. Then he gets into the video. So, but here's my thing. I, I told you guys back then he's coming back to YouTube, right? Yeah. Like, of course he's going to come back to you. YouTube's a more forgiving platform. He has tons of fans in the comments defending him. People on Reset Era defending him, saying he deserves a second chance. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm not ever saying he, done, he didn't deserve to have another shot at, at being a YouTuber again. He is one of the best video, assuming that he edits his home videos. Yeah. That's the thing, too. We, yeah. We, you know, FYI, it's funny. Very few of us YouTubers ever talk about editing. Who's editing our videos? Is it us or is it someone else? Some of us will be like, yeah, I do everything. I don't edit this podcast. Martin does. Um, I openly admit that. Thanks, Martin. Yes. Uh, so it, it's always been an interesting concept to me. You know, Does he edit his own videos or does he not? I don't know. But assuming he does, um, very good video editor. Um, even if he's not editing, he's just directing it, how he wants it to look. Very, very good. Very professional. I mean, mm -hmm. this is why you got hired by IGN. It is one of some of the most professional editing you will see on a channel with only 60,000 subscribers pretty much anywhere. It's very impressive. And this video, very impressive with editing. Even the cringeworthy times that he's clearly not playing a game and he's sitting there with a the Bluetooth headset on on his couch holding a pro controller and he's just like button mashing. I mean, you don't button mash in any games on Switch. So I... He has smashes and all yet. <laughs> and like, and like if, you look, if you look, if you look closely, like the light's not on on yeah. his headset, so it's like, I get it. It's B-roll footage. Yeah, you know, but it's but like, still, but, come on. But, but it's kind of like for someone who's been busted for being fake, don't have a moment like that where it looks like you're fake, anyways. Yeah. At least like show the TV and show you playing the game. Like, yeah. Like even if it's blurred, so we can't see what game. At least show like at least something's happening on your TV when yeah. you have fun. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Anyways, that's what I would have did if I was his director of that video. But my, so the, the video is fine, assuming he didn't plagiarize it. People are already looking to see if it's plagiarized. It's like the dislike and, ratio uh, is insane because people didn't forget. Maybe he thought three months would be enough for people to forget. People didn't forget. Um. And he wants to get back at it. And I'm sure the more and more videos he makes, as long as none of them Come can be proven is, anyways yeah. to be plagiarized in any form, he'll eventually rebuild the base and be fine. He, he's yeah. too good of a video editor, too good of a content presenter anyways to not come back somehow. The world's very forgiving um, when it appears you've learned from your mistakes. Yes. But here's the thing. But the, but the other thing is too is that a lot of times you tend to have to – Admit to your mistakes as well. Yeah, that's the, that's the other problem. Is my, that's my only issue right now. He hasn't really admitted to it. He hasn't owned up to his mistakes. Yeah. And this is a weird case where normally I just think, yeah, he'll move past it. He'll grow beyond it, and he still might. But if he never owns up to it, all the people that I've been hating on him and saying these nasty, mean things, which some have gone way too far, yeah. they're not going to stop because it doesn't 
especially if you get busted one more time. Like, nobody right now beyond your most loyal of fans that were already mm-hmm. forgiving you anyways um, or think you did no wrong in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, you <laughs> – in a situation like this, it's so obvious what the right call is. Mm-hmm. Make a video. Make a standalone video even. Don't make it part of your normal content. Right. And just say, look, I lied. My colleagues don't do this. I assume they did this, but I never actually talked to them about it. Um, I did plagiarize. Yes, I did look at Boomstick Gaming. And yes, I did work. Use, like, I'm not going to go into details on how I did it, but I did it. Like, just if you could come out and admit to it and be like, here's the thing. When you make mistakes <laughs> in life, um, I'm not saying you can't grow and get better without admitting you made the mistakes right but you can't expect anyone else to forget about it or forgive you or give you that shot um on the whole obviously there's staunch loyal fans that will but on the whole if you don't Mm -hmm. admit to it Mm -hmm. and i feel like the very first step he needs to take for his youtube channel to ever recover is owning up to what he did Mm -hmm. and and deep not not just saying i'm sorry to whoever i affected name specific people you took shit from yeah definitely name nintendo life name boomstick gaming come on and be like i did read their stuff i did end up paraphrasing them i did this i did that like blah blah blah. you know you might hold steadfast you actually played the game and all this stuff and And that's fine but i don't need to see you prove you played the game i need to see you own up to what led to even if it was quote unquote subconsciously Yes, that you and, did then, it. and that but happens. It, it does happen. Any game reviewer will tell you you cannot read other people's reviews before writing your own. It, w- after it the will fact, influence. After the fact, yes. Fine. Read everyone's. Yeah. Um, you want to discuss it with other people who are currently reviewing the game without reading the review. You just want to talk to them because you have a question about an aspect of the game. Fine. Especially if in your review, you kind of cite them and quote them. Right. Like, hey, exactly. I, I talk, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, so I didn't like, have a chance so to like play I this part. OJ, who happened to also be playing this game, and he kind of agrees on this thing that I wasn't sure about. So, yeah. like, there you go. Or I didn't get a chance to play this part, but this person said yeah, this yeah. about that part so of the like, game. So, like, I mean, I'm not including this aspect in my review score, but if you're curious, a buddy of mine who's played it, here's his channel, check out his stuff, like blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but like, there's ways to do citing. it. Yeah, way to ways cite to your it. stuff. Um, and if you did happen to read someone else's review um, and ended up subconsciously using parts of it, whether you realize it or not, cite the review in your sources. Be mm-hmm. like, hey, yeah, for, for this is what I looked at. This is what I looked video, at. Video, I did this, and if you ended up plagiarizing again, then a lot of a lot. Of, I think people also tend to be a lot more forgiving if you did that. If yeah. you actually cited it, I'm gonna and, give you, I'm gonna give you guys a great example here. Okay, and Eric doesn't know yet because I don't think he 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 really cares enough to care. A lot of people hate Jake Paul, right? No, <laughs> absolutely hate him. Yeah, right. Yeah, think he's a think he's a. A, a dipshit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what like. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's an asshole. He's mean. He's, he's just yeah. Bad influence on kids. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, Shane Dawson. Not sure if you know who Shane Dawson is. No. Um, he did a eight part series on the mind of Jake Paul, interviewing Jake Paul, interviewing uh, the fallouts he's had with people, uh, trying to get to know the real him, and. Um, very interesting because it started off focusing on sociopaths. Like, is he a sociopath? Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually interesting. His brother might be a sociopath, but <laughs> can't say that definitively. He doesn't really, right, the right, brother right. refused to be interviewed. So, yeah. um, can't really get into that, but, uh, I've watched all of it. It's like nine hours. He's like an eight parts, not like on YouTube an hour long each video. Like the, yeah. the finale was an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Who's doing that on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this podcast, uh, well, us sure, is, yeah. but that's a, po- a non podcast. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, very interesting that he can even get away with content like that, but, um, at the end of it all, I just I just finished the finale today. It doesn't make me like his content, like Jake Paul's content. Um, but what it made me realize is that one, there's a human behind the camera, right? Um, that for all the crap and all the hate you want to spew at him, nobody's thinking about the impact this has on him. And how sometimes a response that he does, like in a video or something, is him just saying "f the world." I mean, he's a kid; he's only twenty-one. Yeah, he's a kid, and for yeah. most of this rise to fame, he's a teenager. Yeah. So, like, imagining that kind of rise to fame, Disney Channel, all the stuff, like when you're that young, you know, and and, and 
it, it's crazy to think like you know even he even he admitted like they brought up things about how you know he had like the, that song and the music video about like you know screw the teachers and all, all the stuff like you didn't teach <laughs> me anything useful blah, blah 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 and like shane's like but they did like you use math every day don't you you know how to speak don't yeah. you you know how to write like all of well this. some might question like, that these are basic but... things these are basic things that you do learn in school yeah the things you didn't learn the things you wanted school to teach you like shame is like these are things parents are supposed to teach you mm-hmm. your moral compass what's right and wrong mm-hmm. like respecting your neighbors like if lighting this massive fire in your pool you didn't even think to consider anyone else mm-hmm. you didn't consider if it could start a fire and light light a neighbor's house on fire or mm-hmm. the disturbance you're not thinking about the stuff because your parents didn't instill that in you mm-hmm. so like you know, I don't want to throw your parents on the bus, but it's kind of like you got all of this. It's like does go back to your upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you actually got to see like this side of Jake Paul that is that uh, I, as a person, I kind of get it and I understand it. all the crap he's been through. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is some of it he's playing a character it, at oh, all? It, it, did the whole, the, it's all a character. Okay. Like when the camera yeah. turns off, he's not like that. Okay. Um, so, and he does that because he thinks that's what people want. Um, no, like, I like mean, he even like like he was asked specifically about the merch sales. Like, yeah, like okay, you had this one video, it was thirteen minutes long. Seven minutes of it was him advertising merch to kids, and he's like, "Why don't you like? Don't you see how you're manipulating? Like, you're manipulating children to buy your merch. If they don't <laughs> buy your merch, they're not cool or whatever." Yeah. You have an entire song dedicated, a Christmas song dedicated to buying merch. Yeah, literally says buy that merch like fifty thousand times. <laughs> Um, and Welcome and he, he defended it and said, I don't really view that as, as manipulating kids. Um, you know, and even, even at one point, uh, you know, he mentioned like shame, shame brings up SpongeBob. Like it's like watching a children's show and all of a sudden SpongeBob every 30 seconds is like, Hey, buy my shirt. And it's an actual shirt you can buy. And he goes, it's like, well, they have commercials. Like it's not the same thing. No. And like your videos of ads, that's the commercial. Yeah. Insert more ads into your videos if you want to make more money. Yeah. He's like, and, that, and Shane's like, this isn't me saying you can't have merch. This is me saying right. something happened in your upbringing. Because if you go back to the very beginning when he was making videos as a kid for his YouTube channel, Zoosh, like he he was even selling merch back then. So like it's just been normalized. Mm-hmm. And nobody along the way told him, dude, your audience is kids. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. You can't. Like kids are very impressionable. Yeah, mm-hmm. they see commercials and they want things, but those commercials it, aren't thrown it's, in it's, their face. It's not the selling of merch to kids. It's the yeah, it's, it's, like the, it's the, merch to kids. That's not it's a it's the saying if you don't buy my stuff, you're not cool. Yeah, basically that's the part that's the problem. Yeah, basically, and and even if you don't say that directly, you give that impression. Yes, of, yes. Um, you know, like you're not a Jake Pauler if you don't buy my merch. Like, what do you mean? So I'm not a fan of you if I don't have a shirt right. that has your name on it. Right. That doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, you guys, you guys aren't Nintendo Prime fans unless you buy that Nintendo Prime merch. Like, no, yeah, come no. on. Um, but in watching his response to that, he was very honest. And like, I, I thought he was, I didn't think he was going to defend it. I thought he would just own up to it. And he's just like, no, he didn't. He literally thought there was nothing wrong with it. He mm-hmm. never viewed it from any other person's perspective. Mm-hmm. He just like, we've just always done it. So mm-hmm. no one's ever told me not to. Yeah. No one ever. Right. Made me think about anything else. Right. And then Shane got up and he's like, you know, yeah, I probably should change. Like maybe yeah. I do need to rethink that. Maybe I do need to get my dad out of the house so he stops influencing everything. Yeah. Maybe this, maybe that. And like it made me realize, and, and this is why I talk about Philip, because right. Jake was – Jake Paul throughout that series – not only was he humanized, because of course he's a human. Oh, I mean, right. Unless, yeah, yeah. He, unless he was literally a sociopath, we would have found that out too. He's not. They had a professional psychiatrist on it, not a sociopath. But it was one of those situations where you start to understand why he makes the decisions he does, why he's done what he does. And it makes mm-hmm. you – when you get behind the curtains like that, you start to see how a lot of this – is a fault of his upbringing mm-hmm. more so than oh, no, a direct yeah, yeah. fault For of sure. him. And at this young age of 21, he's only just now figuring out that this stuff is wrong, figuring right. out his life. Right. Um, and even talked about how he might be changing his content moving forward. And, and Shane even mentioned, yeah, I watched some of your more recent videos. Like it's already more conscious. It seems of not doing the craziest of the crazy stunts anymore. 
Um, that, I mean, that kids yeah, want to mimic when they're at home and right, dangerous. So right. Even when you give warnings, like they see you do this, oh. so I think it's cool. Just like Jackass. Pe- Reason Jackass got, went off air because yeah, generally, people were doing it. Yeah. It didn't matter if the warnings were there. People yeah. were doing it. It influenced The them. warnings are there just to save their ass. Yeah, it's to save your it's legal, not, legal. It's not. It's not there to prevent people yeah, from people doing something. People are still going to hop in shopping carts and go down hills. It's hilarious, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. Right. They want to do it for my entertainment. That's the, that's for them. But right. They're paid, so whatever. Right. Have, have you seen Action Point yet? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, so... This is where it comes up at the film. Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't think Phil needs like an eight-part series with, with Shane Dawson. Well, why but not? What he needs to have <laughs> publicly – it would be cool. <laughs> but what, it need, what needs to have publicly come out is him showing that he's not a robot, that he is human. Right. That he understands what he did was wrong. It, right now it just feels like – Or at least – the- It felt like he brushed it. Like at the beginning of the video – it, it, it felt like you know he there was a specific line I don't have it written down yeah. when he transitions into talking about the product where it felt like the way he transitioned I don't mean this I'm sweet I'm trying to sweep it under the rug let's talk, yeah let, let's get back yeah. to what I normally do. I, I I did this just because I feel like I in a way need to yeah and that, that's what it felt like. it felt like not that not that I want to but I need yeah, to yeah so um and so I mean. Do I dare ask the question? Is Philip a sociopath? I mean, right, right. I don't, I'm not going to make accusations. I'm right? Not no, 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 no. And I, I don't yeah. know him, but it's until he takes that step and can. He, I mean, here's the thing. It's something you could fake. Yeah. He he could just say he realizes it, he can firmly believe he did nothing wrong, but just say he did. And even that, I, I think we'd be able. I hope we can tell if he's genuine or not. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Um, but at least he would have something publicly out there where he acknowledges it, even yeah. if internally he I, still I, lives in denial. I almost, in a way, though, feel like with him, er, you can almost tell. You're going to be able to tell just by just by the tone of his voice, the, the feel of how he says it. I, I don't know if he's because you could fake empathy. I. I just don't know. There are some people that just don't understand that concept and and are not good at doing that. I, what I'm saying here is I, I don't think that Philip should never be able to make content again. I think he's too good at editing, at least not to edit for somebody else, right. let, let alone make his own content. Make I'm his own content. Necessarily make his own content. But he needs to address this stuff if he ever – wants to get people to stop these massive dislikes and stop yeah. hating he, he if you fill up the hate's never going to go away people never. are like yeah. if you are watching this at all because i'll probably <laughs> mention you in the title and maybe it'll make you check out the video <laughs> maybe i'll maybe i'll tweet it at you I don't know. The, the internet's undefeated um you can't the you're internet never going to win forgets. over everyone but you can make yourself look like a lot better person true or not if you could just fess up and you know what Go beyond fessing up. Don't just say, I'm guilty. I'm sorry I took people's content. Mm-hmm. Mention specific people. Mention specific content. Mention, give links to the content. Like, j- instead of having everyone else dig up the stuff that you did, own up to it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell a story. I told this one other time. I uh, got caught shoplifting at Kmart when I was a kid. Um, not even a kid. I mean, I was like 17. Still a kid, but old enough to know better. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was depressed, kind of sort of depressed, the teenager depression. I don't know if it was full on depression, but whatever. My, my, my girlfriend left me uh, and this time it was for good. It wasn't one of our zillion other breakups. This was at the time. (laughs) Yeah. Um, because that, that relationship was, was rocky the whole time. Anyways. Uh, so I was shoplifting for fun. Didn't use any of the items, put them all in the back of my car. Didn't care. Uh, eventually I caught with a DS of all things. Sticking that Nintendo. Nintendo. I already owned it. Yes, yeah. multiple of them. Didn't need another one. I was just doing it to see if I can get away with it. And that's what. And that's why I got busted. They got me on camera, uh, which is fine. You know, I, I needed to get caught eventually, or this could have progressed to something much worse, and mm-hmm. I could have been in jail. So I'm glad I got caught when I did, especially since I was under 18. So yeah, there's also that as well. Anyways, I you can, you can look it up in court records. You won't find anything because it's been expunged off my record. So um, I. I mean, thanks, court system. You actually did something nice for me. The question if I was a different color, would you have done that? But um, it's whatever. I guess enjoy the, enjoy my privilege of being in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. There you go. <laughs> but I uh, that's all like that's all fine and well. 
But the thing is, is when they caught me, when I was caught red-handed, because of course I didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about it there. I didn't talk about it with anybody. Um, when I was caught red-handed and they took me, because before I went to get like literally they handcuffed me and, and put me in the back of the, the police car, they had me go back to the back room at, at Kmart and talk to uh, the supervisor or whatever with the police officer in there as well. Um, and they were asking me, you know, do you know, uh, you know, have you ever taken anything else? Blah, blah, blah. And I realized, in, like they said, they caught, they caught me on camera uh, one other time and it was for like a soda. Um, and so they were suspicious, but they didn't really know. That's why they didn't just outright arrest me. They waited. They kind of set me up. They put me back in electronics, which I hadn't been for a while to see if I would try something. And I did. So they only had me for those two things and I knew it. And I could have said, no, that was it. Mm -hmm. But I decided in that moment, I'm already caught. All the crap's in the back of my car. Mm -hmm. Screw it. Mm -hmm. You know what? Give me a piece of paper. And I wrote down a list of like 70 things I had taken. Um, and I'm like, it's all in the back of my car. You don't believe me? Here you go, officer. Here's the keys in my car. You can... Sure enough, it was all there. And they got it all back. Except for like the sodas and... Oh, so yeah. yeah except for the sodas and some beef jerky or whatever right. that I had taken for breaks. Um, that, you know, just couldn't do anything about. And yeah, yeah. I got fined and had to pay out of the back. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Did, all, did, did what I needed to do to make that all right. Um, and I was, I was banned from going to Kmart for like two years uh, as, as part of the whole thing. Um, which made sense. Like they didn't want a lifetime ban me because they just you're a kid, mm -hmm. you know. It's not you, like you, all you the stuff. You literally admitted there's no legit excuse for this. You said you were doing it for the thrill of it because you were upset with other parts of your life. But like it's not really an excuse. And it's not all of the not all the stuff is just magically admitted, gone to pawn shops. I, I admitted to everything and gave all, like it all back. So like yeah. it wasn't like you, you know, pawned it all off. Nothing and, was even open. They could put it right back on the floor. Yeah. Like it wasn't even open. It was just yeah. sitting in the back of my car. Yeah. So um, that happened and. What helped me, not just, it made me feel better about myself that I just fessed up and, mm -hmm. and said, I could have got away with so much of it. And in fessing up, the total amount of the items added up to a felony. Um, and I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> Maybe I would have rethought fessing up on all the items. I don't yeah. want to get a felony. But you know what? It actually worked to my benefit because they didn't, they didn't give me the felony uh, because I was honest and because the items were returned. Mm -hmm. uh, so because of all that, then they're like, man, like most people get busted down and they're not like this. Like, yeah. We thought it was out of character too, but yeah, this is clearly way out of character because you're embarrassed. You're yeah. embarrassed that you did this at all. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it was just for, it was the excitement of getting away with it. I don't care about the crap. Mm -hmm. uh, so my thing is I fessed up to it, fessed up to my parents, fessed up to everyone. I fessed to you guys one other time on this story. And I use this as an example for you, Philip, because it makes, it's not just about people forgiving you. Mm -hmm. It's about you being able to forgive yourself what you did for whatever the reasons might be and you don't even need to get this personal into the reasons. like i told you guys i was doing it for the thrill of it because of a bad breakup um you don't even need to get that deep but at least owning that you did it in the first place owning up that yeah not just own up that you hurt people because that's a blanket statement how did you hurt people what did you do we still haven't heard your side of, of, of how you felt you hurt people who did you hurt we haven't heard. Mm -hmm. It's good for you, not just for good PR pe person, but it's good for you in self-reflecting on your life and what led to it. And I think it would actually make a really cool story if you – I'm not going to say Shane Dawson. He's really huge. I don't even know if he consider you at your size. But like ha even someone like me or whoever, like someone sits down with you that is a third party and does an interview with you because uh, you've got a lot of interview requests. I know you have. Respond to one of those interview requests and do the interview. Mm -hmm. Answer the tough questions. Don't avoid would, them. Be honest because we're going to know if you're not. If you start making excuses or start saying this is how it's done, you're going to get called on it. Like if Jason Schreier interviews you, he reviews games. He will call you on your crap like if you're just like everybody does it. Mm -hmm. But he'll be fair. He'll let you get your say. Yep. Um, and he has his own podcast. I think it would be great, Philip, if you went on something like that, accepted one of these requests, and gave your side of the story and were honest and admitted to things, even if it doesn't appear on your channel, just so it's out there for public knowledge. That will not only make you feel better, just like for Jake Paul, I mentioned all this stuff, getting it out there. Like he was so afraid. What was, what was so great. And, and I, I hope 
that Philip has half the heart that Jake Paul had in, in the series because the reason he never came out and talked honestly about a lot of this drama and all this crazy stuff, he was so afraid of hurting the people that hurt him. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to hurt anyone. Mm-hmm. And when you hear that coming from Jake Paul, yeah, like, what do you mean you didn't want to hurt anyone? Yeah. That, it actually kind of makes sense. Why didn't you clear – like, why haven't you talked about your dad? Why why have you not, like, publicly said anything about, your, like, your brother sleeping with your ex-girlfriend? Like, all this stuff – because you didn't want to hurt the people involved. Mm-hmm. In particular, his brother. You didn't want to hurt his dad. Didn't want to hurt his friends. Didn't want to hurt, you know, the Martinez twins who used Jake Paul. Like, the Martinez twins, like, apparently – from multiple sources now that are directly involved in it, the Martinez twins left Team Ten, you know, accusing Jake, Jake of racism, accusing him of bullying, and used all these examples from all these various vlogs. When it turned out, it was all staged, and they knew it. Yeah. So it was all fake, and they yeah. signed off on it, and knew all about it, but nobody ever said anything publicly because they were so afraid of making the Martinez twins look bad. Yeah. Um, huh. He didn't want to hurt them, even though everything they were doing hurt him. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, wow, that's it's crazy. And if Philip can have a coming, a coming to realization moment like this mm-hmm. publicly in some form, that to me would redeem him and allow him to at least hold a semblance of dignity mm-hmm. and plausibility that he understands what happened. And if mm-hmm. he doesn't understand it, being able to talk directly with someone who does. Mm-hmm. That's why I said I think Jason Schreier would be a great one for him. Way more qualified than me for this. Um, to talk with him and, and even like like when Jake Paul didn't think he was doing anything wrong with the merch, after talking to Shane, he now understands. Mm-hmm. He knows. He's just never had anyone tell him that. Mm-hmm. No one's ever sat down and told him why. Like you don't view it as manipulation because it's just the way you've always done it. Mm-hmm. But you don't understand how this works then. Like what – you don't you didn't view it as any different than a commercial. And no one's saying you can't sell merch. It's mm-hmm. how you're doing it. Right. You can mention it. Like I've mentioned at the end of it, hey, you want to get this thing? I want to – like that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how you present it matters. Yeah. Having a song all about that matters. Having a song that trashes teachers when you yourself have actually benefited from some of the things you've learned. Yeah. And some of the things you're blaming teachers for are never the teacher's responsibility anyways. Right. But you no, they shouldn't be. But you don't understand these things. You don't understand your teachers right. don't want to give you the moral compass. Right. Your teachers aren't what teach you about they, life. They might they help. Can, they can help, yeah. but that's technically not their job. That's right. just them as humans reaching out and doing something. Right. Um, so I think that for Philip, man, you know, I'm, I just want to end it with this. And I'll probably bring this up uh, in a, my dedicated video I'm going to be doing that you guys probably already saw at this point over the weekend. Um, Philip, man, you need to reach out and, and clear the air if you're going to continue to make content right in this moment. I think you, you're, the way you're approaching this now is uh, the internet will forgive. The internet will forget eventually if I just keep making content. The like yeah. ratio is going to get better and better and better. And it's a bet yeah. that you want to make right now that might be and true and you're not going to know for a year. The thing is, is I really don't think the internet forgets. The internet does not forget. Yeah. And, and do, even doing all this isn't going to make uh, you necessarily – it doesn't like like what like what Jake Paul that doesn't that, like said and this doesn't change what happened, right? But it provided context and made you understand what like and like, also why, hopefully like, leads to change. Up, like the number one question is why did you think it was okay? Yeah, maybe your reasoning would be perfectly understandable to a normal person, mm-hmm. but we don't know the reasoning because mm-hmm. you won't talk about it. You want to pretend it's it just, didn't happen. It didn't or, exist. I the, or everybody well, does it. Well, you know what you made it sound like, Philip. You made it sound like. You joining IGN was the mistake versus what you – like Like in the video, he mentions I'm back on YouTube where I belong the whole time. A lot of this plagiarism happened on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah. it felt like you were saying the mistake I made was going to IGN where I got busted yeah. versus being like the mistake I made was plagiarism in the first place. Mm-hmm. You're not only sure. up to it. You're, bl- sure. you're kind of passing blame off. And this is why I think he needs to accept one of these interviews. He needs to just do it. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, here we are on this podcast, on, on a standalone video. People are going to accuse me of doing it for the clicks, the views, whatever. Say what you want. I, I feel strongly about this stuff. Yeah, no. Um, because sure. this is, he's a, he's, a, let's just, he's a Nintendo YouTuber. Yeah. He's a, he's a bigger Nintendo YouTuber than me. He gets more views than I do. This isn't me saying I deserve more views than him. What I'm saying is 
what he does has an impact on the industry I'm in. Mm-hmm. And because of the attention of what he did, well, God. And also the fact that he then basically threw everybody under the bus by saying, this is how everything's done. Yeah. Like, it, I didn't review. Here's the thing. I didn't review Starlink Battle for Atlas, right? I did an impression video. I mentioned that I probably wasn't going to review it. What I didn't mention is why I wasn't going to review it. I read other people's reviews already. Ergo, I don't think I can write. I can do a review. Mm-hmm. I just think integrity wise, I cannot make a review because I've watched a few reviews and read a couple. Yeah, I I can't. I can't review. I know subconsciously. I like. I'm aware that it's going to affect my review. Mm-hmm. No, Their definitely. thoughts are going to enter my head at certain times. Their words are going to enter my head. And so that's why I said, you know, I'll just do an impression video. I'm not going to do an actual review. Yeah. Uh, and I approached my impression video, I think, in a way that wasn't talked about in other videos. I don't know. Maybe there was some influence still. But at least I'm not trying to pass it off as this is my review. This is like, no, I played the game. Here's my gameplay. Here's what I think about it. Be done with it. Um, it it's – Philip, Philip, Philip. Here's the thing, Philip. You, you're doing everything that makes me not want to like you. And I don't know you as a person, so I don't know if this is just who you are, so I shouldn't like you. Maybe you are narcissistic. Maybe you're a sociopath. Maybe you're a zillion things. By the way, even if you are a sociopath, it doesn't mean that you're a psychopath. Those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Have relations, not the same thing. You can be a sociopath and still be a good person. Um, And it's not your fault. Most of the time, if you're a sociopath, it's literally not your fault. It's just a tragic event or you were born that way. Mm -hmm. Can't help it. But it's... We just don't know. Yeah. And I want to know. I, and I want to know for – like I, I shouldn't care this much about you personally, but I felt personally impacted by what he did because he made people like me look like shills. No, oh, exactly. He made people yeah. like me look like we don't try. That's what don't I said. put in the effort. You know how many comments I get in some of my – not all of them. It's it, And I know they're trolls and just a few people. But I get comments every single week, every single day about how crappy of a YouTuber I am, how much of a shill I am, or how much of an e-bagger I am because I happen to have a Patreon and, and sell merchandise. Or and now have a P.O. box. And now have a P.O. box. Apparently that makes me an e-bagger because yes. I have a way for people to send in fan mail that no one has to send ever. Yes. Um, like, <laughs> there's people that say these nasty things about me on the daily about how fat I am and, and like – I've learned how to like cope and deal with that and have it not really bother me. But all of these things pale in comparison to like these things weren't really even being said about me until Philip happened. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I've had a few people call me fat, but like calling me a shill and ebag or like this stuff wasn't happening mm-hmm. till Philip did it. And I don't know if he, he just created more people unleashed that paid the more trolls. attention, like unleashed them, or if it's just a residual effect because mm-hmm. I covered the Philip situation. I got attention from some of that stuff, and now some people that are watching my stuff are like, "Well, blah blah blah." blah. We don't like the only reason why you're popular is because you you did this video. Which, by the way, there's a whole bunch of channels on YouTube that exist just for drama. So, like, it is kind of a thing YouTube likes. Yeah. YouTube likes drama. People yeah. who watch YouTube like drama. Yeah. Drama sells. Yeah. It not just sells on YouTube; it sells on TV. Yeah. I mean, if you think about, you know, if you like sports, what are some of the top sports stories every day? It's always drama. Yeah. For sure. Um, like, oh, the Houston Rockets, like, sucky, like a really bad team now because of their defense. Let's create drama out of nothing. Like, yeah. No, it, I know. That, that, that's, that's inter- drama is entertainment for a lot of people. Um, but this is drama that it, it has an impact in the space I am. Like, like people asking me, you know, why am I not on the Swan Wave podcast? One, John and I have never even had one conversation. So we don't know each other. Mm-hmm. So there hasn't been a, even like I've even tried messaging him. He's just never responded uh, to get on to get on the, the podcast. But Philip's been on that podcast. Um, and it starts making you wonder like, why am I wondering, is RGT85 legit? Is Dreamcast Guy legit? Is OJ legit? Like is Spawn Wave legit? Like it I think they are, mm-hmm. but the fact that someone was on it that wasn't makes you question everything. right and, and, I, and that's me as a fan and but, i am and, a content creator and the thing is so is I that question even though i wholeheartedly believe no that philip is a one-off case is he i don't really know i'm not yeah i'm not gonna sit there and watch a video and then scour the internet to find out if that video has been plagiarized like i'm not going to do that mm-hmm. that that's not my job that's the job of the creator or like the people monitoring the creator like i as a fan i'm not gonna do it. so like Right. No, I know. I get you. 
I don't know. I mean, do you but, have any thoughts on this before we close out? Um, I mean, if if you've tr- if he's truly reformed, I mean, best of luck to him. Don't you know? I, well, try not to do, do it again. He does no. it one more time. That I think that's it. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I think he might even get reported to YouTube and his channel could get shut down. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but uh, I mean, if you if you don't do it again and you've hopefully learned from your mistakes, I mean, yes, good luck, second chances. You know, I'm not trying to hold this against you personally, yeah. but you know, I don't know this. Philip. Yeah, exactly. I'm not mad at you, man. I mean, I'm disappointed. Let's yeah, say, I'm disappointed. I'm not mad. I just think you need to air this out. Or the internet will not only never forget, they'll never forgive. And they may eat you alive. <laughs> They're going to. The internet and is here's terrible. The thing, it could be a terrible place. It could be a wonderful place too. Yes. But for you to ever get back to some semblance of wonderful and to get back to some normalcy, you got to talk about it. It's tough. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it's tough for you, just that it is apparently, because you won't talk about it and you won't accept any interviews. Um. If for some reason you think Kotaku, like he called out Kotaku like they were trying to get him, maybe that's why you won't talk to Jason Schreier, fine. Philip, tell you what. I'll send you an email. I'll send you a message. Come on and send a Prime Podcast sometime. Let's air it out. If, if, if you're not willing to talk to anyone else, I'm a small-time YouTuber. Don't get a lot of attention. Maybe that's the best way to do it for you. Maybe instead of getting the attention of everyone, keep it in a small community and see what happens. Because uh, I, I think this is something that you do need to get out don't know if I'm the best person for it, but I'll ask the tough questions because you need to talk about this with somebody in public somehow. Mm-hmm. You don't need to get personal if you don't want to, but you need to at least explain um, the thought process, the thought process and why you don't think it's bad. Mm-hmm. If you truly think that, or if you recognize it's bad, what about it you think is bad? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's plagiarism? How do you define it? Um, and I promise and, to and the thing is, you. And the thing is, is do you actually feel this is the way the industry is? It, yes. That's that's the other and, question. And what makes you feel that way? Right. As as a person like me who's done this and been, done game reviews and seen how it works, all of it, what makes you feel like your experience at IGN, the biggest review outlet in the world, what makes you feel like everyone there does it that way too? Because they're all denying it. Maybe they're all lying. What makes you like? What did you see? I mean, and, and, and the thing is, can, can we trust what you say? The thing is, but, is maybe behind the scenes there is more plagiarism at IGN. And you never know, but don't know. And they just haven't been. Got, I'm not no saying one, it's no there. Been busted. Right. I'm not saying it's there. So. I'm not saying to go look for it. But it's <laughs> no, yeah, no, now no, that people are going to yeah. now we're going to look everything. for it. Yeah. But it, you know, maybe it is. Maybe it was the culture there. You never know. Well, but the but at the same point, it's, it's hard to blame the culture when, it, right. when so many of his when, videos when it, did it. Right, but he has a history yeah, of it. Right, that never got before before it. beforehand. Yeah. Yes, no, very true. So like it's hard for me to be like, oh, IGM's culture did that to him when he was doing it on his YouTube right. channel. Right. So yeah. then, yes, yeah, and and yeah, the, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not or saying it is. I'm not saying it's. Search. I'm not saying it's IGN. IGN. Yeah. I know. It's it's just it's a one of many many possibilities. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> um, again, I haven't worked at IGM, but it's kind of like he was doing. But the, then again, but then he was again, doing it before he got there, so you'd like, figure you'd figure a lot more of these people would actually be now. Like now that it's been called he, attention well, he, to, he called it research, and it's like, yeah, people research the game and they talk to people and get extra information, but they don't read people's reviews of a game. That's right. always been a no-no. Yes, it's always a no. You can't read someone else's review and do your own review. And if you did. And you still really want to get a review up for some reason. You have to say that in your review. By the way, this review might be influenced by this. This like I, here's a list of of even here's the thing, Philip. Here's one thing that no one seems to really have called you out on as much. You always talk about how you do research. You know what happens when you have to do research? You should know this. You're a college grad. You have to source your research. Yeah. When I do news, I source all my news. If I found – heck, there's been times where I found a piece of information off from OJ. What did I do? I linked to the video where I found it out about why. That's my source of information. That was the original place I saw it, even if it's not the original source. He, he's linking to somewhere else. And I got to say this, Philip. I can't just get mad at you about this. I'm going to call out my fellow YouTubers. Dreamcast guy, OJ, RGT85, Spawnwave, all of you guys. 
terrible about sourcing your information. Terrible. You know how many news waves I've watched or PE News or RGT News or, or whatever, and I love you guys, but you'll bring up all this news, and since there's no sources in the description, no links to where this news is from, people just think it's happening because you said it's happening. You're, you're making it so your people that might want to verify something you said have to Google search and find out for themselves. Yes, I can obviously verify your – like you guys aren't lying. As far as the stuff I've seen, I don't think you're lying. But I will just say like you got to source. In a, in a, cer- in a, cer- gotta, gotta source. In a, in a certain way, it's, it's – And it's, they might not know this because they probably didn't go to journalism school or anything. Right, right. Or take any journalism classes. But in a certain way, it's almost presenting yourself as the original source. Yes. Yes. If you don't actually source your things, it's it's just saying that you are the one that talked to them specifically and yeah. got this news first. And even if in the video, you might say something like, "Yeah, this first popped up at Nintendo Life." Link to it then. Yes. If you don't link to it, Nintendo Life gets no benefit of what you just said. I mean, maybe somebody will go to it, but but the, yeah, right. The chances of them typing in NintendoLife.com and then looking for that specific thing. Yes. Uh, and Nintendo Life has a popular YouTube channel. So how do we know you didn't hear from Nintendo Life's YouTube channel instead? Right. Versus the website. Like, right. This is why you have to sort. Like, this is the one thing, it, it, you know, if any of you guys come at me about it um, and, and give me excuses, like Philip DeFranco, I'm sure all of you guys can respect him, has links to all of his sources in the description for every story he gives. Mm-hmm. you got to source your information. Because you know what also is nice when you source your information? If, if some of your information back is wrong. wrong, you can say, one, you can own up that one, you should have vetted it and got multiple sources better. Yep. But two, you can also say, well, this is the information that was presented at this website. Now I know not to trust this information or this source mm-hmm. as much. Yeah. You you take a lot of the responsibility for the accuracy of the report off of yourself yes. because you can point to this interview with this place on this site. If that ends up being wrong, it's not my fault. Go to the place that it was from. They miss. They misreported it. Mm-hmm. They put up a bad translation. Mm-hmm. Not my fault. Right. Um, you can't expect me to be in that room to do a translation. Right. So it's on IGN. I don't speak up. that language. So, again, um, even yeah. just for your own integrity and protection of your own reputation. Yeah. As I've seen, like OJ, man, you know I love and respect you, but I've seen some people come at you, but he was wrong about this and wrong about that. And, like, the videos they point to, the number one issue in those videos is that the information you're talking about um, comes from places that you aren't the source and I know that because I know where the places were, and you didn't link it. So it comes across as you are saying it as if you have sources behind the scenes that told you this. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you do that, OJ, and sometimes you do have sources. But when you are sourcing other websites, you got to actually source it. Right. And again, that that's a whole separate issue to fill up. And, and, and if, and if you actually do have sources, you can say my sources. That would be your, your citation. Yes. My sources say... If you are the actual you know person that actually says that, the first person to get the news out. I think I'm going to make a video about this. There you go. And by the way, guys, <laughs> I'm not trashing these YouTubers. No, they're all fantastic. Uh, they're, they're awesome. I love them all. Some of them, like Dreamcast guy and OJ, I, I, I've talked to on a regular basis. Um, they're, they're great people. But like, and I don't think they're faking anything. Or like, I, I got nothing, nothing against any of these guys. I just think YouTube can be done better. Mm-hmm. And um, I think if I just make a general video and I just use some examples from their stuff rather than call them out specifically. Um, just be like, yeah. So I was watching like, you know, spawn wave news. I'm like, instead of like an exposed video, I'm not exposing what I'm saying. Well, I guess I'm exposing, but I'm not exposing for a negative. What I'm saying is it might be a calling like, Mm -hmm. Hey, Nintendo YouTubers, we need to be better about this. Mm -hmm. We need to be better about providing backups to what we're saying. Cause even if we say where it comes from in the video, uh, you're not providing an easy access point for people to verify what you're mm, saying. For sure. You're making them have to dig and search for it if people want to verify you. And because people don't want to do that, it's an automatic assumption that what you're saying is correct and they just trust you. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying they shouldn't trust you, but it's one of those that if you if they can't verify, you could be making something up and no one would even know. Yep. So it's good. It, for it's sure. Good for practice. sure. For sure. I know – 
we trust me. One of the things I hate is when I like I, Eric knows I have fifty oh, tabs God. open on my computer. Yes, yes, tab. he does. You know what? A lot of those tabs are sources that and I haven't hyperlinked. I'd have have and I've had multiple times. I've been here. Where the hell's that damn tab? Ah, ah. Where are all these tabs? Open? They're different yeah. news stories yeah, that I'm yeah. sourcing in Prime News yeah. or something that yeah. I that I have to add in the description. It's it, it's just life. That, that, no, I don't for know. sure, Philip, for sure, and I. I think you're you're so talented. Mm-hmm. You're the the talent level you have. I wish the potentials. Yeah. Oh my! I wish I had that talent, mm-hmm. especially the video editing. Like, oh my god, it's so good. But yeah, that, that's really all I have to say on this. Yeah. Uh, before we sign out, and yes, extra long episode. You guys deserved it. It's been three weeks. Yeah. You guys deserve this long episode. Uh, before we sign out, uh, we do have to shout out some of our patrons. Uh, so you want to go with the $10 backers? Yeah, I can. That would be, uh, Edward Norton and JWH and Zenith. Thank you guys so much for your $10 patronage here in October. Uh, our $20 patrons, uh, we have Neil Willis. Yep. Yes. The Neil Willis. It was one of our vlogs that we met out at E3. Hi, Neil. Hi. How's it going? Yeah. Yep. Uh, two homes. Yeah. Love you, man. Haven't seen you on a, on a podcast yet. Remember, our $20 backing tier on Patreon is where you could be on an episode of the podcast. And Two Homes has been on one, mm-hmm. but it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, a newer one that we just got last month, actually, Andrew243 Aberg. Yep. Hopefully, I didn't uh, butcher your name. Yeah. Uh, he was on a podcast last month and uh, has signed up to be on next week's podcast. Oh, nice. So, okay. he'll be back again. And then... Um, and be, uh, righteous. be righteous. Yeah. Gotta gotta always love be righteous, not just for the patron support. He almost single handedly said, Yeah, kind of. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much, man. Uh, and we have one last one, and this is at a tier that doesn't even exist. <laughs> Fantastic. And I think he did it because he feels guilty because he uh, is page is like he, he okay. This is like the OG patron, like one of the first ones I ever had. Uh, and um he kept having card issues. So he just like wasn't doing anything on Patreon for months and he felt bad. So suddenly he just upped it and he's kept it there. Who am I talking about? That would be Mr. Mark. Mark Greenberg, maybe. Um, he's at the $50 imaginary tier. Um, again, uh, would, we do have $5 and $1 backers as well, but if you want to be mentioned on a podcast, just to make it short and concise, for us, $10 and up. Who is sadly getting his rear end spanked in our uh, fantasy, fantasy football league, league that he's running. Yes. Sad day. Um, anyways, uh, thank you guys, and thank you to all of our patrons for your yes. continued support of making this podcast possible almost weekly, <laughs> usually <laughs> weekly, uh, and making a lot of other things possible at, uh, at, the, at the studio, at Nintendo Prime, uh, making some of our other content possible beyond that, um, like our new uh, weekly editorial that I do, which is fun. I, li- I like doing those ones. Pre-scripted, pre-written, reminds me back of the old Zelda former days. It's kind of nice. Uh, all right. That's going to do it. Well, I am your host. I don't even think we said our names today. Nathaniel Ruffle Jans. And who's this Who's this guy here? Uh, that, hey, has his own Nintendo shirt, by the way. I got to call this out today. I, he said he's had it for a while. I never knew he like, had it. Anytime I'm, you see I'm him wear like the, pur- like the purple Nintendo shirt I'm, or like one of these jackets, like or Nintendo, like it's all with my stuff. I'm pretty sure I've worn this before have. for a podcast. Maybe when we weren't on video. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure I did. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been maybe years since I've had it. No, maybe. now you're going to make me go back. Yeah. The, great, yeah. great chance to go to NintendoPrime.net if you yes, want every yes. single episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Yes, it is. Um, you can also check out the Nintendo Prime Podcast on uh, on Google Play. We are on Google Play. If you look up the Nintendo Prime Podcast, it'll show up. Uh, we are also on uh, iTunes and Podbean. And yes. we'll have links to all of that down in the description of the YouTube version. Unfortunately, like hyperlinks aren't really a thing with the audio version. So, hey, you're already listening to the preferred platform you want to listen on. Anyway. Hey. Um, yeah. And for the, for the audio people, it's a as a show with the NES controller says, keeping it classic, which makes a lot of sense. NES classic. Yeah. It cla- yeah. Yeah. That must have been the inspiration for the name. It was. It was. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. You can follow me on Twitter uh, at Ninty Prime. Yeah. How about you? Uh, at Emo 8790. Awesome. Is there anything uh, you want to shout out before we get out of here? Yeah, I'm good. No? No shout outs? No shout outs? Well, I'm going to shout out something I previously talked about. Um, If you're someone who hates Jake Paul, understand. Go watch the Shane Dawson series. Um, I'm not saying it's going to make you like Jake Paul. I'm not sure I even like Jake Paul. But uh, Shane Dawson's doing – it adds context. Yes. Context, I think, always matters. Yes. 
Um, and he's done other series, by the way. This isn't his only person he's examined. So um, go go watch Shane Dawson's content in general. Good 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 content maker. One of the only content makers on YouTube that can consistently make forty five plus minute long videos, and you watch all the way to the end. <laughs> there you go. So he's like one of the only people on YouTube doing stuff like that. Um, someone's gonna mention something like Matthew Matosis and his two hour. Re- okay, yeah. Okay, he's not the only one. <laughs> all right, you caught me. And, and, and this podcast, it's just probably now reaching yeah, three right. hours. Po- oh, it is three hours. All oh, right, fantastic. Actually, it's not because we didn't. Well, I, I realized that, but like still, yes. All right, we'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>